This week on RSBNB Update, the mining and smithing beta is here and we have full coverage and suggestions on tweaks going forward. Also, revolutionary patch notes for puzzle boxes and specialist slayer assignments. And a frank discussion on rule breaking and bans. This is RSBNB Update, episode 658, recorded Thursday, February 15th, 2018. Bringing the hammer down. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of RSP and the Update. This week, we're back. We're back. The the update of the century, the update of the decade, the update of the month, uh, definitely um, is here in terms of a little bit of a preview and a little bit of a preview about uh, where it's going to be going. But this shows that things are actually happening and that the doubters can put all their tin foil hats away and can rejoice with this update. But we'll get to that in just a moment. Welcome back, Tennis. Thank you. And of course, also to discuss this this big this big potential shift is Tycho. Welcome back, Tycho. Oh, hello, Shane. I just couldn't hold myself back. Yeah, I just had to be on this show. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, we were we were looking for people to come on. Tannis said he had a friend, but his friend couldn't make it. So I thought, okay, let's see, let's see. Oh, Tycho's available. And oh, Tycho's already written four pages of feedback for this. So I mean, I mean, that's actually four posts. Oh, four yeah, posts. Guess, Sorry. Okay, yeah. I th- I read four pages, but all right, that's fine by me. Yeah, close enough. Anyways, I got my how do I call it. Heart starter again, if just in case you're breaking my heart, you know, <laughs> which apparently we tend to do a little bit. But of course, the update we're talking about here is the mining and smithing beta. Um, you know, the mining and smithing beta ha- has reached almost mythical status before this week, hasn't it? Yeah, it really has. Yeah. Um, because recall, I believe it was in the tail end of 2016, they published a document that showed exactly what they wanted to do with the mining and smithing skill. But the vast number of people in the community ultimately shot it down because they felt it was too radical a departure from where things were. And, you know, looking back on it, I feel like we're pretty close to th- to what that initial... Uh, rework that was shot down was yeah that goes to i i don't know i like being informed when it comes to those documents but at the same time i'm not really sure how helpful they are i think the beta is what is that that's where we need to be brought in is at that point yeah and i mean you show you show a you show a normal player a, a design document and they can say oh this is this sounds good on paper but you know the that's not how that's not how gamers go about playing their game. They don't care how the game is designed. They just it, care that it is immersive and engaging to themselves. Mm-hmm. They could care less about, you know, all the little um all the little uh nitpicks and inner workings of the skill. So, um nonetheless, the beta has uh, been delivered to us. You do need NXT to play it. And that's because they um, are hooking into the NXT client to create uh, unique launchers uh, for it. You just basically click a link that has been provided on the mining and smithing uh, post, and it'll launch your NXT client to the appropriate world. And you know, it's a it's a closed instance world. You start off with your own character. Um, it's a bit frightening at first because you do uh, have to recreate your character's image, which um, threw a few people off that I talked to. Oh yeah, no fashionscape, no rune coins, yeah. Solomon store. I, I just oh dear. I just hit random a few times, and uh, there we were. So, um, in the mining and smithing beta, and on the first day, it was it was really it was really busy. Um, it's gotten oh, less yeah, busy it since was. it yeah. arrived. It threw the J mods off. They never expected the amount of players to get in there. Yeah, I mean, you just have to look at it, and you can see, you know, there's people running around, and the people running around were. Uh, running around on the level of, um, you know, Varrock World 2 almost. So it, it was very busy. Yeah. And that's also a good test because recall that when you're in the mining and smithing beta, um, the 
one of the core redesigns of the mining skill is that you're not going to be competing for the rocks with everyone else. You're going to have your own fair shot at it. So that's that's very nice that you got to play with that. Um, so when you arrive in the beta, all your levels are set to level one. The levels that um, are at play here are mining and smithing, of course, but also strength and agility because your strength and agility levels uh, do impact your mining performance. But we'll get to that in just a little bit. So what we're going to do here to give a bit of a brief rundown of the mining and smithing beta is we're going to go through each of the skills and their mechanics and provide feedback along the way of how we feel about that. And then after we do that, we're going to talk about the Q&A and some things that were surfaced in the Q&A that we might not have heard about before. And then we're going to round off the mining and smithing beta segments with a uh, just a quick uh, fire round of uh, suggestions or fixes that we'd like to see um, brought into the mining and smithing skills in the in the rework phase. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, so are you guys ready to begin with mining? Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's not be too picky and bring down the hammer too fast. Right, definitely. This rework has a lot under the plate. Yeah. So, you know, splitting apart the mining uh, skill and the beta, the new aspects that I've already mentioned are, of course, the non-depletable rocks, which everyone can be thankful for because we all remember uh, going back to the days when we were noobs of mining, you know, south of Iraq and pe- fighting for people with for that precious coal, right? So um, yeah. that's been fixed. Um, I actually remember dying a lot to the scorpions in uh, Falador Mine. Yeah, that too. That too. Um, there's also a new stamina mechanic, which unlocks at level 15 mining, and this leads into nicely of active versus AFK mining, i.e. you can be as attentive as you want, or you can have it be like waterfall fishing or the sarin stones are right now, right now, and agility and strength do affect that. So that in effect sums up the new mechanics for the mining skill. So non-depletable rocks... What do you guys um, think of that? I don't think there's too much to write home about um, with that. You know, I do, actually. Oh, okay. Um, this was a huge – I mean, can you think of a bigger change that could have happened to mining besides not having to compete um, with other people? I mean, I know it's not as big of a deal now as it is when you're a lower-level player, but to me, this was a that was a big deal, and I – loved that mechanic i think it is awesome and if you worry about you're just going to be standing there well we have something for you later (laughs) because there's a way to get you to up and moving but i i think it really um helped and here's the cool thing so it's a big change to the skill but it feels like mining exactly still feels like mining it didn't change the core feeling of the skill so i really like it yeah, and I mean, it just makes sense at this point because, you know, if you're competing with other people for ore, that creates, you know, the feeling that you are, you know, in competition with them and you're less likely to be social with them, right? Oh, yes. Then it's at least definitely in a positive a way. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, that's definitely something that we need uh, today in this game is we need to be able to be. Uh, having social experiences while skilling because I know you and I can all count here the number of times that we walked through the Sarin Stones and you see no one is chatting with each other. Mm-mm. So, oh, yeah. Um, silent grinding. Exactly. So, I mean, if you take that element away, that's one less barrier towards uh, competing socially with them. Um, and, you know, there's nothing, I think, bad that can come from not having to compete because they will be balancing out the number of ores that you get uh, for that. I, mean, I don't think there's any could, problem with that. I mean, if I look for one problem, it would be that you only need one location in the entire world to be in and nowhere else. Well, and no, that's, that's, but that's not entirely yeah. true because – you know, you could have one location for this, and I think that's what they said about where they want to go. Just look at the deep sea fishing concept that they did: multiple levels of people fishing or mining in the same area, but at the same time, you are going to need multiple of those rocks there at those locations. And you know why that's the case? 
Rocketunities. Rocketunities. There you go. And you know th- these are going to obviously appear different uh, once the once the game uh, or once mining and smithing moves into the main game in terms of its rework because right now they're just a loot beam and you click on them and you get a bit more XP for doing it. So that's our active versus passive mining, and that's what you said, Tannis. That's how they get you up and around moving um, for mm-hmm. this skill. Now and it's enough to to make it worth it oh definitely it. yeah yeah like these numbers are not going to be um final at all and this has not received scaling xp balance passes yet but just for comparison i was mining elder rune uh or in the in the beta and by just you know leaning back and whatnot i was getting around you know 9500k xp an hour but by maintaining myself as being fully attentive, that jumped all the way up to around 130k XP an hour. Now, granted, take zero interest in these numbers because, you know, they are just there. They're numbers as they are. They're not balanced at all right now, and that's going to come later. But the point is, is that you can jack your XP up by that amount if you decide to play mining attentively. Mm-hmm. And so- that makes me really happy because I'm an active player. I'm not the Netflix and scaping type of person to know Netflix that and what skill. I do. That's what we call it around here, these parts. <laughs> it's either well, Netflix and skill it, or Netflix and kill. Right. It's very far back in my dictionary, so thank you for correcting me. Anyways, uh, it was, makes me really happy knowing that the more effort I put into the skill, the more I get back that I don't really need to lay back or just stare at the screen at my character swinging a pickaxe and knowing that it won't make a difference. But now I can just take my mouse and click on these rocks both to keep the stamina up and as soon as I see a rock opportunity, then click and get more XP. Oh, it makes me happy. Yeah, and and, and it's rewarding, which mining right now isn't because you either doing sarin stones or you're just fighting for resources right and it to me it adds another layer of complexity to skill i mean at least to this skill that we didn't have before um mining's pretty one-dimensional other than the sarin stones which is its own kind of thing um but to have that extra layer of of that extra dimension um, where you can choose how you are interacting with the content, I think is really important to flush out the other side of this game, the skilling side of this game, yeah. because you have lots and lots of choices when it comes to combat, how you're going to deal with things. But skilling, you only you, you go, you hit the rock, that's that. So to have um, a choice with that and to have these other mechanics with the stamina, with the rock opportunities, with, um, that is... Uh, it's really good, and it really shows that they thought kind of outside the box on how to make this better without changing the core of what the skill is. Yeah, and that is one of the things that Jagex came out and said, we want to bring scaling into the same level as bossing. Something that, if I'm going to be honest, first thought, well, that's impossible. Do you know how intense a boss fight is? But looking at this, this is really the first step in the right direction. Yeah. And, um, you know, this, uh, this goes into what we were saying earlier is that, you know, you can make the skill rewarding and whatnot, and you can, um, you know, put new elements into it. But at the same day, at the, at the end of the day, rather, this sounds a lot like mining now, because if you're mining and now is probably a good time to talk about this. If every time you hit the rock, you are going to make more progress if you're refilling that stamina bar. And that's something that unlocks at level uh, 15, uh, level 15 mining. It's stamina, and that is, I think, the ever-changing aspect of this mining update. Because without this, mining is just still just, you know, effectively going to sarin stones everywhere in the world. But with stamina, that changes it because what happens is your agility level increases the amount of stamina that you have. So the higher your agility, the longer you can mine and be effective. Now, strength comes into this by increasing the amount of progress you get each time you strike the rock. And your pickaxe also uh, scales into this as well. So when you're mining, you have two bars above your head right now, um, a 
bar that starts out red and becomes orange, and that is your progress on that rock. Then above that, you have a yellow bar that starts out full and decreases over time, and that's your stamina. So if you click the rock, each and every time your player hits the rock, you are going to be recharging that stamina indicator, and you're going to be mining faster and getting faster XP from it. And this is rewarding active gameplay. Mm -hmm. And it's not punishing... AFK to the point to where you don't have a choice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like um, this, this allows you to decide what you what you want to do. And if you have to um, step away for a minute, you, you know you're not like, oh man, that's gonna blow my whole hour. Um, it just, I think there's a good balance with that. Yeah, and um, if your stamina runs out, you take a break, and your agility level will control how long the break is that you take. Mm-hmm. So, but so the animation to that's kind of cool. I like it. Yeah, it, it's like you're just kind of um, sitting down and putting your hand on the rock and kind of taking a breather. At least that's the way I interpreted it. Well, and you wipe your wipe the sweat yeah, off wipe your, wipe off your, your forehead, wipe your forehead. Oh, and... what a hot day! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I did notice too where um, before now with the way that mining works right now we get xp when you get the ore right right in the beta you get it every swing of the pickaxe. right with a little bit more when you um ultimately um get the rock see i like that is something i like too because um i guess this is kind of it's kind of out there a little bit but are you not gaining experience every time you swing that pickaxe like if you were going if you were to go out and mine you're going to learn you're going to get experience every time you swing your axe, whether you've got the piece of ore or not. So, yeah, um, actually, to find it more realistic, and it's it's cool. It's more immersive. Yeah, definitely. And, and for as you progress, you learn more with every swing, more yeah. experience, and you don't necessarily need to get the ore itself, even even though that's something you should right. get. But and that's where the rock opportunities you... come in. Is that you also get a nice mm-hmm. boost of XP when you see that glowing beam coming down in the beta. Um, you know, just a bit of a, a recap here of how strength and agility factor in on the mechanical level. We described it at a high level, but inside the beta now, um, one-tenth of the strength scale rounded up will be added to the progress with every pickaxe strike. The contribution of strength to mining effectiveness will be about 5% of the overall mining performance. So recapping that one-tenth of your strength level. So if you're 99, that's uh, that's 9.9, rounded up. So 10 will be added to the progress with every pickaxe strike. And now your player's agility uh, skill level is added to their mining skill when calculating how much stamina the player has. So obviously 99 mining plus 99 agility is going to get you pretty far here. Although this could potentially double the size of the stamina bar, the resulting impact on the player's XP rate is fairly small. So that just controls how often you take a rest and how quick that XP comes in. And, of course, you can recharge stamina at any time um, based on clicking the rock. And, you know, that me- effectively means here with this that if you have a lower level agility and mining level, you're going to want to be clicking that rock more if you want more optimal XP rates. Whereas it's not yes. going to be as big of an issue if you're level 99 in both. Yep. Yeah, we, we're we going less away and more away from this support skills mattering and more into you need to be active to make some progress yeah yeah now the strength skill i i can see that i can see a few players um getting troubled by that because it will be harder to have a pure skiller um yeah i i Um, so i understand that criticism although um it does make sense to me yeah. that it is it is the way that it is. When we got this first design document, actually, I tweeted uh, Mod Jack on this, and we had the same concern on the podcast. I don't know who was on that episode. Um, but he got back to us and said, you know, after clarifying it, he released the design documents, and um, that's where he said it was only going to be 5%. So mm-hmm. I, I think 5% is a fair compromise if you're not willing to go down the strength pass of leveling your character up. Yeah, I, I I do too. And the feeling I got in the beta when experimenting with level 1 and level 99 strength is that it doesn't make such a big difference that you must have it, that you must max strength before training mining. And the same with agility. Yeah. 
And and I mean that, that that's fine because that is something that um, we want to be the case here is that you don't want to be feel forced to change uh, the way you train, but at the same time, if you do want to do that, then there should be um, a little bit of encouragement for you to do that. And we all know that you know for the min maxes out there, five percent is a lot. Oh yeah. So yeah, and and this is going to be a skill that um, you know, like I said it has a lot more complexity. We are getting to a point where yes, it's 5% um, for the agility and the strength. But once the other things start coming in, your juju potions, your um, mining outfit, oh, that's something your else familiars, well. um, once all these things come in, you're really being able to build an efficient, you know what I mean? Like, right. You're able to tailor your character towards mining. And that's my next yes. point is that if you drink an agility potion and a strength potion, those will take into account when you're mining. Yeah, and I I just, I love that. I think it's great. Yeah. It's time to make some overloads to get you... <laughs> mining, mining overloads, <laughs> mining overloads. There's an idea for expanding trip. Oh, um, man. I just want to burn your money, Tycho. I mean, I am yeah. accepting donations. I'm just saying <laughs> I just oh, want to give I'm a brief overview. Every rock to dust. <laughs> oh, geez. I just want to give a brief overview of the stamina mechanic for those who haven't read the design document yet. Um, what it's like under the hood. So we said level fifteen, you get stamina, and basically what happens is every time you swing your pickaxe, the bar will drop a little bit, and whenever the player clicks on the rock, it refills the stamina bar, which we've outlined here and they say with a full stamina bar the character will use a four cycle mining animation rather than a five cycle animation this is a 20 percent bonus to both xp and ore which makes sense because if you're using four cycles rather than five cycles you're increasing that by one in five 20 percent so this is the kicker right here is that by keeping your stamina bar full you are using one less tick cycle or 0.6 seconds and, and another thing, Shane. Yeah. And that if you are mining a rock and you're like halfway through and you see a rock glowing next to you, you're like, oh, I don't want to lose the progress on my rock. Well, here's the nice thing. You can stop mining and get to the next rock, get your XP and still keep your progress. Yep. Yep. So in some that ways, it's kind of like uh, staying in combat with the uh, adrenaline. Um, exactly. Now, if the stamina bar is not full, then the character will have a chance to play either the four or five cycle animation. This chance it starts at 50% at anything below full stamina and scales down to 0% when the stamina bar is completely empty. With the stamina bar empty, the character will always play the five cycle animation. So there's a chance for you to mine quicker if your stamina is going down, but... It's not always going to be there, and it's get, going to get worse as you go. So as you can see, this is how they are fostering dynamic gameplay. Um, and, you know, this is this is just a great mechanic, and I think it truly revolutionizes mining. And I like the way mining works in this beta from a mechanical standpoint. Um, one more thing on this. The highest amount of clicking, which makes a difference, is to click – once after each swing of the pick, restoring stamina to full each time it drops below full. This is one click every 2.4 seconds, and it will give the best possible rates. This I think it's great. Like, this starts feeling like a boss fight. Well, what it does is, okay, I don't, I don't know if you guys are familiar with some of the like just crazy efficient players out there. Um, but I know people that will do the uh, – you'll do waterfall fishing. And they'll be fletching in between fishing. Wow. You can you do both at the same time. Yeah, it's it's nuts. Or the um is it a one tick cooking, two tick cooking, something like that, where you if you click on the range every single click, um, rather than letting it go AFK, you can significantly increase your XP. So there's little tricks out there right now. Um, but this actually kinda like canonizes it yeah, this and is makes it a real to be system. In the game. Yes, and that I just think that's really insightful on their part and, and good. It's It brings that another layer to skilling. Yeah, definitely. 
Now, you know, it's all it's been all it's been all sunshine sunshine so far about the mining part of the update. And I think mining is in general pretty fleshed out. I think we can all agree on that, right? Yeah. Now going to mention the ore bag? Yes, I'm going to mention the ore bag. So when you um start mining, you have this ore bag with you, and you can fill up these ores in the ore bag and each ore that you get, the higher level they are, the the more impact they have on filling the bag. And that's all fine and dandy. Um, you know, it's, it's been said that the ore bag might be upgraded with the Dungeoneering bag uh, in the future. Uh, so that is, is some aspect that they could go with that. But I want to talk about right now is just in the beta right now and something that definitely needs to be clarified um, before this mechanic ever makes it out into into the main game. And that is that if you... Right click your ore bag and tell it to put itself away. The ore bag disappears. It's not in your bank, it's not in your tool belt. Oh. It is just gone. Now, you might be wondering, how do I get the ore bag back? Well, you get the ore bag back by receiving an ore while mining. So I don't know and if that that sounds like a bug, right? That yeah, I, that didn't make sense to me. Yeah, and I mean, that's what I said. I mean, we're, we're we're showing the mechanics here right now of this, and you know, if we're led to believe this is the case, then the ore bag, when you put it away, will just disappear, and you'll have no idea that you have an ore bag, and you'll only get it back when you start mining. And yeah, that has to be a bug because they even said that they weren't sure about that going on your tool belt during the Q and A. There's there's no way that's intended. Okay. And there's still the opportunity of replacing it with a mining cart or, or other yeah. things. All right. See, personally, I like the idea of the ore bag because it's something we already have in game and it's upgradable. Oh, I, that's it's my second favorite part of the whole rework is the is the ore bag. I love the ore bag, um, but I don't know why it's telling it go away. Why it would like disappear? Like that's that's just odd. Yeah. Um, that doesn't yeah. fit. But it removes the need to run to the bank all the time, something yes. that was a natural thing when you were doing mining. I mean, when you did mining today, you need to run to the bank as fast as possible unless you have a sign of portal or a familiar or a juju potion, something that extends your inventory. Right, but that sucks. Like, Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it really does. I can actually, this, uh, I can agree with you with that. I mean, the skill involving a lot of running to the closest bank and where the distance to the bank is more important than trying to be efficient when you are at the rock, that's, that's a warning sign that something is not right. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I, I guess there is an option, and this has already been implemented elsewhere, and that's the coal trucks. Yeah, it was implemented at the coal mines uh, west of Sears Village, and it was a huge changer since coal is so is so demanded today. It's used everything from steel to meat, and even for some other things like uh, elemental ore. But and we're going further away from coal, but we will get yeah. to that later. But yeah, that, running that, was still with, a uh, cool smithing, thing. You, you still needed to run between the coal or the mine carts just outside the Sears Village Bank. You still need to run. Yeah, I, I'd rather the, have the I'd rather have the ore bag. I just the mining carts was a step in the right direction, but it's not. That's not where we need to be going. Hey, and we're going to go green. We're going to get rid of coal. We're going green. It's good. It's good for Gilinor. Uh, you know, there are people, there are people who like their coal. And, you know, <laughs> I'm one of them. I like coal. I also think that coal is something that should be featured more prominently in this update just because, you know, it's such a legacy item in game. Um, well, they didn't make it beautiful, clean coal. Hey, well, I mean, they that's something that. that's something Even we can do with invention. Message, it's, it's bad. Okay, there we go. No, but let, but let, but let's not let's not jump on coal. Coal is great. Um, it it heats our Except homes. It's nice it and cheap, Santa. and th- th- that's true. That's true. That's very true. 
Um, so coal actually in this, in this part of the game is used as a secondary for the, um, for the mithril or sorry, for the steel, for the mithril, for the adamantite and for the, uh, uh, runite, right? Or no, no, not for the runite. Are you talking about the beta or the The beta today? Okay. The beta, uh, coal is used from level 20 to make steel and then uh, 30 to make mithril but for both adamant and runite we have a new ore, a new secondary ore oh, yeah. called limonite yep, right. That's right, okay, that one okay. I, I, I wasn't aware that uh, that was the case, I thought it went all the way up to rune uh, because I didn't see a mining spot for it on the on the oh, uh, Dracolith uh, area I didn't realize it was just level 20 and 30. Rip coal. Sorry, yeah. Shane. And- <laughs> yeah, I leveled uh, every single all in the beta, and so I made sure. But yeah, it's it sounds laminite is the new secondary for adamant and lunite, something the free-to-play will get when the rework comes out. And currently, it's a one-to-one ratio. You need one adamant and one laminite and the same with one runite and one laminite to make one bar yeah and and i mean we'll talk about that in just a moment uh when we get to smithing but that one-to-one ratio actually persists all the way through uh the skill believe it or not and that and uh, you know what i really like about that what's that that is that laminite let's say you are working with adamant and you're saying oh i'm so close to to the next level of smithing, so I can make runite, but I don't want to mine more adamant for that. What do I mine? Aha, I can mine the secondary that I'm going to use when I'm going to use runite. And the same with coal. It's used for both steel and mithril. Yep. Yep, that's right. So, um, And I don't even think it... So the one-to-one, yeah, that's cool and everything. Um, and I know, like, before, when like with the way that the skill works now i mean you can get up to like what five coal per one runite or whatever to make a bar that sucks you can only make a couple bars like at a time with the hopper though i'm really not sure that it matters yeah and and that Um, and i think that is a good point um to jump off into smithing but before we do that i just want to mention all of the new ores because we haven't actually done that you might have heard me say elder rune or (laughs) um or, you know, uh, Bane or whatever, but uh, yeah. So we got uh, Luminite ore, as you said, Tycho, which is the secondary for adamant or for adamant and rune, right? Yes. Yes. And then we have Necrite ore, which is the secondary for Dracolith. No, for the next year, there it was the ne- Necro and the Phasmatis. Necrite or Phasmatite or are tier 70. Then at tier 80, we have Bane with uh, Dark Animaco or as its secondary. And then mm-hmm. at tier 90, we have Elder Runite or, of course, because, you know, Rune needs to be the best that it is in game. And it has two secondaries rather than just one, and that's Light Animaco or and Living Rock or. I think we can all guess where the Living Rock or will be from in game. Mm hmm. So, oh, yes. Yeah. I thought it was cool. I so, saw that. I was like, sweet. Um, so, based on this, you have Bane, Dark Animica. Those are the tier 80 ones. At tier 70, Necrotite and Phasmatite or. Um, it doesn't appear as though the tier 60 Dracolith ore has a secondary. Not at the moment. Hmm. I wonder if there's a lore reason for that. Because it's not dragon, remember? Right. Because like dragon would be made by the dragon kin in a special Using way. Using the dragon kin so form, on, so which, right. is, which makes it special. Hence why we can have Dracolith here and not have it step on the toes of anything else. Right. So, so I wonder hmm. if there's like a reason that it doesn't have the secondary kind of thing. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Taiko, did you That's see not... anything when you were smithing in the beta that uh, regarding this? I mean, I mined Tricolith and I just melted it without a secondary. And the J-Mods were talking about the law behind it. 
that it's the same metal or the ore that the Dragon King used, but because Dragon King being much stronger, wiser, yeah. and knowing how to process it, they can make uh, pure dragon armor and weapons that's that's currently dropped by monsters or sold at certain locations like Dragon Skimitar at uh, Apatol Island or the Dragon Dagger and Dragon Longsword at the Lost City of Sonaris. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I just wanted to double check this because, I mean, you see Dracolith rocks level 60. So I'm going to go mine a piece of Dracolith right now, actually, and see uh, what that gives us because um, I'm actually – interested in in seeing this because it did it, it seems odd and you know I, I i would personally prefer for consistency's sake that um when this come to the live game we have a secondary for dracolith right so yeah i would like to have the current titan 70 secondary to move down one bit so it interacts with both yeah, Tire 60 and definitely. Tire 70. So must much like the coal and the luminite is go, it's doing it currently. All right. So Dracolith longsword. Let's say we want to create one of those. You need two Dracolith bars. Okay. So that's the case right there. So you need two bars. So I should go get another piece of ore then. Um, but yeah, that 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 looks like that's going to be the case. Um, that's very interesting. Um, so I just actually want to take a moment here and highlight to everyone that, you know, what we're seeing in the beta is an example of the colors that they uh, want to go with for all the different ores and whatnot. And I think that makes sense. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what they come up with for what these rocks look like because, of course, Dracolith looks pink right now. And we all know that dragon ore is red, right? Or dragon equipment is uh, a deep red. So. Yeah, they mentioned they haven't they haven't like nailed that down yet. Yeah, like officially. Yeah, yeah. it's just a placeholder currently, yeah. but that's a uh, fun thought. Yep. Um, another thing that wasn't actually nailed down in the beta that we can talk about now that we're uh, here right now is that the stats on the uh, on the armors and weapons that you create in this uh, mining and smithing beta are not set. They are not set. No, they're all like on according to plate bodies or something like that. Yeah, there are yeah. Yeah, like many that. numbers that need to be balanced and discussed before before the rework comes out. Yeah. Yep, Dracolith confirmed to not need a secondary at the moment right now. So that yeah. is something that uh, is, is very interesting and could be looked at going forward, I guess. So, neat. All right, so you guys ready to move on to smithing, or yeah, is there anything else that in. we need to uh, talk oh, yeah. about mining for? Let's jump let's into bring smithing. Bring down the hammer. Okie dokie, bring <laughs> down the hammer on smithing. <laughs> All right, so I think the biggest thing that people are going to note um, when they see smithing for the first time in the beta is that, you know, the smelting bars is largely the same. But whenever you go to a, a furnace and forge now, because you will actually need to use the forge more often than you have in the past, there is now something called a hopper attached to each of the smithing furnaces. And this is just a huge store for your ores and your bars, and you can just keep them there right yeah, from your ore bag. It takes it out of your bank. I don't know if you kept ores in your bank, but this takes them right out of there. Fancy yeah. that, huh, Shane? Yeah. Another another <laughs> bank space saver. Uh, but uh, I actually didn't like it for that reason, believe it or not. And uh, here's really? why. Okay. Do you yeah. have a fever? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm completely okay. all right. You know, it's yeah. snowing, so I'm just cool. <laughs> okay. Anyways, here's the reason. With mining and the introduction of the ore bag you eliminate the need to run to the bank. At the same thing can apply to smithing, that you take a load of ore, and instead of melting it, you are keeping it in your bag. Also, with the now the every smithing item is taking a certain amount of time, let's say one minute, then every hour of smithing is a lot less running 
and the more Smith thing. Yeah, and and that's a huge issue because I remember starting this game way back in 2004, and you would mine south of Iraq, then you would have to take that load to the bank, and then you would need to find a furnace to use, which was either Falador or Lumbridge, to make your bars, and then you would repeat the process by running back and forth to the bank uh, across from uh, the Falador uh, West, or sorry, the Varrock West Bank there, and using that uh, anvil there to make your steel bars or whatever you were making. So um, this really streamlines the entire process. And do you think we'll see a merging of anvil, forge, and furnace all in one? I hope into not. one spot. Oh, in one spot. Okay, yeah. That, no, that's cool. Like the way it is in the beta. Yeah, like how it is in the beta. Yeah, you think that we'll would see be, that in that game. That would be awesome. Oh, I I hope so. It, that would only make sense. Because I mean, yeah. Like, look right now. There's an anvil in Yanil, and I don't know if there if anyone can tell me where the nearest furnace is to Yanil. Yeah. No. I. I yeah. They, that probably needs to be redesigned. It should be that three like that. Um. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I agree with the furnace being next to the anvil. It's it makes it smoother that you're melting and now you create. And even though I don't agree with having storing an unlimited amount of bars and ore in the furnace itself or the hopper, I still think having the anvil and the furnace next to each other really really brings out the smithing that it's time to smith it's time to bring the hammer down and i i really love the hopper mechanic um i love the hopper mechanic i oh, i, the I just, yeah well i just i hate running for the sake of running it's dumb i don't like it um so i actually like that and part of the reason we need to have the anvil with the forge um is i think what makes this part of the update actually really really good which is um this is actually closer to real smithing and that's what i really exactly. really like about this um you heat up the metal you put it on the anvil um you beat it once it cools down you can't shape it anymore you got to heat it back up i mean it's like i don't know if you've ever been to like one of those like history parks oh, or whatever yeah. oh, where yeah. you actually do the blacksmithing in it like this is like it and i'm like wow this is really cool yeah it's slower but it's really cool, and it's way more immersive. So that takes us into into process here. So as you said, Tycho, you bring all your ore and whatnot, and you dump them in the hopper at the furnace. And then you use the furnace, and this allows you to create bars. And bars create just like normal, and you know, as, as we expect in-game. And then you can dump those back uh, into your hopper. And then next you have a furnace that is next to the forge. So you click on the furnace, then you're pre presented with a little menu. And this is a menu that I, I think we'll all be coming very uh, familiar with in the future here. Um, but basically what happens with this is you get a choice of what kind of, um, of what kind of ore you want to, or sorry, what kind of bar you want to heat up. And what effectively happens from this point is that you are then presented with what you want to make. So, for example, you could say in this list, I might want a necrite, or maybe I want a bane, um, or that'll, or sorry, a bane bar that'll be heated up. So you click bane, and then you're presented with the standard smithing UI that we all know, and you choose what you want to make. So a bane longsword, it'll tell you um, how many you want to make. And then you'll get a little indicator that you're heating up this in progress smithing object in the beta which we can assume at some point in the future will be clarified that it's an in progress bane longsword and it'll have a heat value from 0 to 597 so you heat that up in the furnace and then you just have this item in your inventory and you just bang the anvil next to you and you start hammering it and you start getting xp just like mining so smithing here can be afk or it can be fully attentive and you can reheat the item to get faster XP. And it's also worth noting that when the item is finished, you also get another larger chunk of XP. Mm. And Achieve. this is true smithing, like you said. Yeah. Now, the with with the I I do find this to be much less AFK than um, oh, yeah. smithing now, yeah. and and much 
less AFK than the mining or anything else. And it's a big change to go from an inventory to one item at a time. Um, I actually like what they're doing with this. Um, I think they'll probably have to tweak out the amount that the amount of time that everything takes a little bit more. Like we've said, these aren't numbers aren't final. And I only really looked at the process, which I love. Um, but if there is going to be a rub, this is where it is going to be. Yeah. And, yeah, the, and, and, the general, and the general consensus of the player base uh, seems to be that the that the process that's in place for mining right now is fine, but the smithing process could be made a little bit um, better with this. And you know, you'll note that you know uh, our agility and strength levels do affect mining, but there is no level aside from your smithing level that affects. Sp- the smelting or smithing or creating of the actual object on the anvil. And, you know, that could come in with the heat mechanic. And this is going to be one of my uh, big things I'm going to highlight later. And I'll just say it right now is that we need a use for coal outside of those lower level items. And I think a great use for coal would be to keep that fire going or perhaps even make it hotter to give you an extra benefit to um, the, the, the smithing process like for example you could maybe add some extra coal to your furnace and that would make it hotter so your heat wouldn't run down as fast for example you know so and I, that has reached the yeah. j mods they are working with ideas a couple of ideas they have right now is having fire making mm-hmm. help assisting the heat mechanic and another one is uh, having coal as as you said reheating the 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 item to a certain degree or just increasing the cap. But the latest idea I just heard was having a new reward from Dungeoneering that you fill with coal, and when the heat completely goes away from your item, it will reheat it for you to, uh, let's say, 30% and make smithing fully AFK. I'm not sure how I feel um, about that. Well, I don't so like I said, it coming from Dungeoneering. Idea. Yeah, I don't that's like it coming from Dungeoneering. And I don't Why like not? the it's fact it's going to be fully deal. AFK. Yeah. No, no, no. If you're going to if you're gonna go in with this on skills, it needs to be either fire through making fire making <laughs> or yeah. just coal. Because how many times have we heard the community complain, complain, complain – that the coal that they get from their kingdom is going to be useless. And and let's be real here. You're going to get all this coal from your kingdom and you're going to be level 60 plus smithing. Who is going to use this coal at the steel bar and mithril and addy level? Who is going to use that? Nobody. Nobody. Exactly. No one's going to use that. So I, I think bringing it from Dungeoneering is a horrible idea. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree. It's that's a bad idea. Um, I would like to see fire making tied into it, and I think that's going to happen. Um, Coal for and sure. fire making makes absolute sense to me. Mm-hmm. Um, Sounds like global warming to me. No, that's well, 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 fine. That's fine. <laughs> I don't want to have the global warming debate right now because it's okay. It's, it's medieval. We've got plenty of time. Yeah, that's right. That's oh, right. yeah, good points. Good points. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I mean, let's let's just let's just take for a moment and, and realize where we'd be without coal in the real world. How many countries got started off with coal and coal-fired electricity? Now, ask yourself, where would RuneScape be without coal? Now, that, now there's the real clincher. I know where without my coal. Uh, bank would be without coal. <laughs> <laughs> Much smaller, <laughs> and I mean, I don't, I don't care about the drops from PVM for this because those are going to be gone. What yeah. I'm trying to do is, I'm still trying to give a use for coal in this. So yeah, I think the heat mechanic could be good. Yeah. Um, anyways, um, you know, you you complete this item, and there's a certain amount of progress on each item. Uh, if you right click the item in the beta, you get a a dialogue that tells you what your current progress is and the XP remaining on it. And then when you reach the end, you get that amount of chunk of XP. Now you might think, oh, I got a Bane Longsword. I'm done. But what you can also do with this is you can also take this item, reheat it, 
and add more Bane uh, bars to it and make a Bane longsword plus one, then a Bane longsword plus two, bolts. and then a Bane longsword plus three. And I forget if there's a plus four, but probably not. Um, it depends on the tier. Yeah, it depends on the tier. I think it just yeah. goes to plus three for Bane. But for Elder no. Rune... Well, maybe but Elder for, uh, Rune was plus five. So Okay, so Bane plus four then sense. for Bane. Um, you could just go to plus four for Bane. And this improves the stats with it. And these are what people are going to use at high tier if they want to make their own equipment. And here we go. Finally, for Iron Man and whatnot, we have the ability to make your own equipment at high tiers. Granted, it's not going to be as good as what you get, but hey, it's something. Oh, it's yes. still, I mean, it's still good. And um, well, and let's not forget, once you bring it to the highest, you can then decorate it. And then you're getting a real big chunk of XP. And if you have more money than sense, you can level really quickly by right. doing that. So this is creating a whole economy around the skill. Around high level smithing. Mm-hmm. And this is the classic low XP, high money, or high XP and wasting money. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I mean, uh, the the way it, the way it looked in the beta right now, and once again, these numbers are just are just there. Um, you know, smithing is going to be around fifty k xp an hour based on what we have in the beta right now. Granted, that'll be tweaked, but if you finish your items and you decorate them and then hand them off to Thurgo, you get a nice chunk of xp for it. So, um, you know, I I think that they have really hit the nail on the head here with the right way to go about the progression at the high tiers for the skill in order to make it so that it can be rewarding to people who want to use the skill for making their weapons and armor, which the game sorely needed. And Mm -hmm. there is also the option to finish these items to a point where you can then sell them on the GE for being detailed or uh, decorated rather. And then you just get a high amount of XP for them. So um, there's going to be good choices here for everyone to make. And I think that accomplishes what the mining and smithing beta set out to do, which was bring the mining and smithing skills in addition to everything we've talked about, but into the future. So, mm-hmm. um, I mean, would you yeah. say they made mining and smithing great again? Well, let's just wait and see until it actually arrives in game. <laughs> um, I can't say it was ever great. So I don't know if we can make it great again, because but. the thing is, uh, you know, there are other options that they talked about in the past, like the masterwork smithing, for example, at smithing past oh, yes. level 99, the ability to get drops from PVM and attach them to these smithing items, which actually made it into one of the design documents, believe it or not. And that's something that we have been long, long championing um, on the podcast here right now. So, you know, but after seeing this, I would rather they stick with this. This is. This is straight skilling, and I like it. Like I, I, I like the way that they. Well, I mean, of course, you'll be able to. to you'll be able to do this as uh, as the core aspect of it, right? So. Right. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah, it, it's really great. Um, let's see. Where was that do- piece on masterwork smithing? I don't know. I don't know exactly where that was, but I know it was mentioned at some point in the past. It's not in the beta right now, but hey, I mean, it, it's definitely something that will be worked on. And it highlights why we're getting a technical beta right now, highlighting the process. Because you can think of all these things and, oh, that hasn't been done. That hasn't been done. This hasn't been done. And there we are. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, I, They are down to 16 pages of notes. Like down <laughs> from 40. Well, there we go. There we go. Wow. So, uh, you know, I... I want to talk about, uh, give a bit of a rundown of the process here as per the design document, just to get it on record as of what it is right now for people who might not um, be visualizing what we talked about. But basically what happens with this, you get unfinished metal items, so unfinished Dracolith items, and then that um, is a single item that you have in your uh, inventory, and you can only be working on one at the same time. Um does anyone else find that limiting? Like, I don't find it limiting. I'm just asking the question for the sake of asking it. Yes. I, I feel it's limiting because imagine you're working with something 
some friend comes and tell you, you want a boss or you want to do this activity? Oh, okay. And you put it away in the bank. You come in the next day and try to work with something else and you can't. You have to finish what you first started. That's annoying. And yeah, and it can't go in it the should hopper. Be up to, it should be the player's choice of if you want to finish what you started or if you just throw it away. Yeah, you will be wasting money, but it's the player's choice. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you can know, destroy it. If you really yeah, I mean, I'm to. fine for that option. Like a destroy option, I'm fine for that. But otherwise, it seems like it would be way too much of a challenge to be putting in a bank because, what, you got something that's 10% done. That's going to be a different space than something that's 25% done. Right. So on and so forth. And you can see kind of why they did that there then. Yeah, and we already have, like, we have a precedent for that. Um, you can't put on another porter and activate it if you have one going. So... I don't find it too limiting. Um, it makes sense to me anyway. Yeah. All right. So you click on the item and start smithing it. And now as for the actual details here, one strike is made every two ticks and 10 progress is added to the item on each strike. And the more complicated the item, the more progress you need to make. And that, of course, controls the time um, that you spend smithing the item. Small amount of XP is given with each strike. However, this XP is taken away from the total XP for making the item. So the XP bar, XP per bar will always remain the same. And that's the clincher here. And that's the way it's always been uh, with mining and smithing is that when you have a rune bar, you're going to get some amount of XP for that. It's just the amount of bars that you're putting into that rune plate body. So um, that has remained the same for this. And a key note here, because progress scales with the number of bars, this means that high bar items won't be faster XP per hour anymore. And because of that, they can't, or at least not for now, they are not putting plate bodies at the end of the of that tier milestone of scaling. In and you learn everything as soon as you can smith a new ore. And you know, I think that's ball. I think that's fair because what yeah. you want to do is you want to be in a situation where you unlock the entire Elder Runite table, and you know there might be a quest unlock or there might be a drop from PVM that requires level ninety eight smithing, and you want to keep the table free for those kind of things. Yeah, at but least that's the way I, I see feel, it. Yeah, the way I see it, that you unlock so much you're not sure what to smith i mean i get everything handed at to me at once and my first question is what shall i smith well i'm but, not so sure what, what, what should i do i'm 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 a bit overwhelmed but that's the beauty of it it doesn't matter what you smith it's the same xp yeah but no the ones who are getting it does that person knows it know it yeah, see, I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm fine with it because it, it doesn't matter. Like, whether you're making boots or whether you're making a plate body, like, it's the you get, you're getting the same amount per bar. It's so, a thought yeah, that but counts. But we want the person who gets everything to know that that it doesn't matter if I make a plate body or if I make a dagger, and that's something I feel could be done that I progressively progressively unlock things. I'm not talking about, for example, if we're saying runite, that a rune plate body necessarily needs to be at 59, while a dagger is at 50, but we can half it down to a plate body be, being at 55. That way, it both feels fulfilling to reach something in what you can smith, and at the same time, you can start with the basic stuff that's starts with one bar or two and then progress and become better because otherwise it feels like okay now i got everything here at level 50 and now i need to get to level 60 what's in between nothing where's the motivation in between no i think there'll be things that can be added in at some point to it i don't think it's going to be you know a desert landscape between all these Oh, sorry about oh, no, that. Because we still have other tie-ins. We have invention yeah. and we have things like, like that that might – well, I guess we don't because that's at level 80. But anyway, um, I mean I see what I see what you're saying, Tycho, and, and I kind of felt like that at first. 
But once you realize, I don't know, for me, once I realized it was the same XP, I'm like, oh, well, this actually gives me more freedom to be able to do whatever I want. I can make a, you know, if like if you're playing an Iron Man and you get to level 50, it's like, oh, wow, I can make my... I can make my whole like outfit now and I don't have to go through these arbitrary levels to make, you know, now I can make this and now I can make that. Well, no, now I can gather my materials, make everything I need and have a set of armor and a weapon and go out and do what I was going to do. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If you reach that milestone simply because you want to make a full set of armor and nothing else, then bang. This is the perfect design for you. I want to make a, a rune, full runic armor and then not train the skill in like one or two weeks. And you get it done that fast. Yeah. All right. If, if it was at a plate body at 59. I want to go over some of the numbers regarding heat right now because, um, you know, we talked about heat and what it is, but we might not have a good idea. Um, but basically, if the heat reaches zero, an item can no longer be smithed until it's reheated, which is what people were suggesting might come from Dungeoneering, which we already said is a horrible mistake. Um, you reheat by clicking on the forge, and when you have heat, it acts as a multiplier on how quickly the progress is made. It, just like mining, it doesn't influence the amount of XP you get. It just influences how fast the XP comes in. So high heat is considered anything above 66%, and that'll give you a two times progress multiplier. Medium heat is greater than 33%, which gives you a 1.5 times progress multiplier. And low heat is between 0 and 33%, and that just gives you the standard one times progress modifier. So as you can see here, if you keep that heat level above 66%, you're going to get double the progress, and you're going to finish your items twice as fast as if you just let it tick down all the way. So, Active smithing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And with this, they say faster progress means faster XP per hour because the items are finished more quickly. It does not increase the XP per bar because the same amount of XP is awarded when the item is finished. So it's just a question of are you getting that XP during the smithing process or are you getting it after you finish it? Now, this goes into what I think you guys were talking about, how you know it's now rune plate bodies will no longer be at the end of the tier 50 um level table that everything is just going to unlock at level 50 and this is why they're doing this because the mechanic for determining how much xp you get and how your xp is faster per hour is now going to be determined by heat level which is again fostering dynamic gameplay just as within the smithing side of it so that's why yes. that ch choice was made and i personally have no problem with this and i prefer it this way over the over the um, way we have it right now in game because if you look at anyone leveling smithing up right now who they just want to you know blitz it on a double xp weekend or whatever they're going to build plate bodies yep. and, they're, and they're just going to absorb the cost so yeah um or and, you and, spend lots and lots of money and go to artisans <laughs> exactly and you know with that being said it kind of we already have that problem that exists in game because plate bodies are smithed Maybe some claws are smith, maybe some swords are smith for disassembling with invention. But in reality, what else is smith in the current smithing table? Nothing, because it's not useful Nothing. to us. So now we're going to be given the choice. The players are given the choice here in this beta and presumably in the future mining and smithing update of what they're going to make that'll be most beneficial to them. Because and as we it's talk not going to be an XP before, penalty. You are going to have the choice between smithing base items that's valuable for those who want to buy that material, or you can just buy in the base products, decorate them, and hand them in right. for a large chunk of yeah. XP. Right. So if you pass in um, the top upgraded item, you can just go to your nearest uh, your nearest anvil, and you can choose decorate these items, hand them, hand them in. So... Um, it says here, decorating works like upgrading, but only requires the item as a material. No more bars are needed. And once decorated, it becomes untradeable, but then can be handed in to important smithing NPCs. And the amount of XP given in return is half the total bars used to make the item. For example, an Elder Rune Longsword plus 5 needs 64 bars to make and upgrade. So XP <laughs> is given for 32 Elder Rune bars. 
But see, that's cool, though, because that's what we're going to be making the tier 90, like, tank armor out Bingo. of and stuff. So I think it's fair. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy, but it's fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And let's be honest, since when haven't Skillers blown millions and millions of GP just to make the really nice stuff? Right? Yeah. And now it, there's also a table in the design document here of the various upgrade tiers. Um, bronze can get zero upgrades, of course. Iron and steel get one. Mithril, adamant get two. Rune and Dracolith get three. Necronium and Bane get four. And Elder Rune gets five. So there we go. There we go. Um, and, of course, go. these stats are not final. And they will be uh, modified uh as things go, they say the base item level for Elder Rune will be level 80 with a level 90 combat requirement. And when upgraded, we'll take it up to around a tier 85 weapon. These, okay. So this and, is not final. Yeah, that's not final. That's something we really have to say multiple times through this show that everything we are yeah. saying is how it currently looks. And it's very likely to be changed. It's very likely the Jagex are going to tweak this and come up with different numbers or even different mechanics when it's released. Right. They did say they like where these numbers were, but they're willing to, you know, yeah, change exactly. Them. That's That's why why we're having change a beta. Them. Yeah. yeah. We're currently having like forty six pages of feedback in the forum and that's going to change the stuff. Ooh. Wow. That's you know, it, they they can have all the feedback they want, but when Timbo's dice falls, that's what it's going to be. <laughs> yep, that's right. And, you know, Mod Timbo is definitely going to have a huge role in uh, determining what happens uh, here with this. He's going to have a role. He's going to have a role. Did you plan ask. that? <laughs> no, that was not planned. No pun intended with that. But, oh, my God, that's horrible. <laughs> Where's that ring again? <laughs> Are you going to make him kiss your ring this coming RuneFest? Oh, maybe. That's actually a pretty good idea. Mm, why not? I mean, I pulled that ring out of his ear. So why not? <laughs> okay, so mining and smithing done. Smithing mechanics done. I don't think there's anything we didn't go over in terms of smithing mechanics. I think we got most of them right. Yeah, I, th I think we're ready to add our uh, add our two cents. Okay, right? but before we do that, I want to go over a bit about what was said in the Q and A. Oh, that's right. Yes. Um, so I, I still can't get over sixty four bars to make that elder rune item plus five. Yeah, that's you're going to get XP for half of it. The very elite of the elite. That's badass. Yeah, and and you know that's actually going to make smithing. Uh, worthwhile again, believe it or not. So that, that's really once you great. feel like once you feel like a master, like Smith, you know, you know, you've been working on this this piece for you know however long, and it took sixty four bars, and it's like you have this thing that you know you put time and pride in, and it's it's cool. I mean, think about it. Like it's, I think it's totally fair because you could go and spend however much time at a boss and maybe you'll get something, maybe you won't. You probably will, like, given whatever the drop rate guaranteed is. Guaranteed satisfaction. Um, yeah, it's just... I don't know. I think this is cool. I mean... Yeah. It brings back... Brings back uh, it brings back money. the memories of accomplishment, really, for the skill, yeah. I think. And, yeah, and I'm saying that with go. someone who has level 93-ish uh, smithing right now. So I have a ways to go for this. And... Um, I have some theories on that, but we'll talk about that later. Um, yeah, and soon you will really feel the accomplishment of that, and people will go around with plate legs where it says uh, "made made by tennis in their butts. <laughs> that's, that's, that's right. <laughs> and it's not only sixty-four elder rune bars; that's sixty-four light animica rocks and 64 living ore rocks and 64 elder rune rocks that you got to get as well for one item that's true. for one item that's true. so that's yeah true. for one item i i actually like that because that's actually going to make mining profitable believe it or not so right on yeah, not from pvm everything yes. mined by hand 
All right. And that takes us nicely into what was talked about in the Q&A. Rework will be coming uh, later this year. And, you know, I, I approach this beta very methodically. And, you know, what I ultimately saw coming from this is that the mechanics are down pat, but there's just so much stuff in game that interacts with mining and smithing and graphics and balancing and whatnot. And that's where the core of the work is going to be uh, for the rest of the year if they can guarantee that this is done right. So um, lots of work still to do. So definitely later this year, I'd probably say third or fourth quarter at this rate. Um, discussion for every item, service, and activity affected by the rework. How many pages did you say was this with Tycho now? Well, from the beginning, it was like 40. It's now down to 16. Okay, so pared down by a factor of about half. That's, 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 that's a lot. A lot. Yeah, yeah that's a lot. That's especially that, I mean... It doesn't necessarily need to be a long sentence. You can say something like fix Autistance Workshop and fix this requirement in a quest and fix this small thing like cannonballs. Yeah. That's a lot of things. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, um, so 16 pages of that. That's Now, what did you mean by mining will be balanced to give more ores than smithing consumes? Oh, uh, actually, somebody edited that. What does what's that you tell us? Any, anyways, no. Uh, <laughs> okay, that sounded very convincing. No, I don't. Ask Shane. I rarely edit okay, anything like okay. that. I, I uh, according uh, to my knowledge, never edited that. Okay, so the thing is that you won't get a uh, one mining XP for each smithing XP. You will have to mine more ores to get to 99 mining than when getting 99 smithing. And this would cause that there will be an excess of ore oh, that okay. will flow around the market. The primary design were to have it a one-on-one ratio, but then it came, hey, well, how is people going to buy their stuff? So, so this effectively... So this effectively means then that if you're training mining and smithing up from level 1 to 99, you will get enough ore to um, level yourself to 99 smithing, but you'll have extra that you can also sell. Exactly. All right. That's good. I like that. Yeah, that's definitely good. Um, Or make upgrades. Or make upgrades. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, Removing all items from smithing and pvm drop tables oh, okay you first no i i mean i'm i'm just marveling at this that we're actually reading this and this is something that I they know, want to right? do it's happening I was how many times hurry. do we talk about it and it's it's happening they're going to remove smithables and ore and it's happening wow Though they are yes. saying they can bring in something called ruined armor with um, the same alc values and disassemble values. <sighs> yeah, you know, I do think we do need something like that. I don't care. And we, this is why we need it. I have, like, I, I have a good friend. She has had a rune collection since I've known her. It's probably bills at this point, and she would lose her bank. <laughs> when, nope, when it goes sell to it level now. 50. Sell it yeah, now. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Yeah, so it would um, be you know turning those into ruined um, for the same outcome. I hope they are untradeable. Okay. I hope they are untradeable. Where you could just alk it or disassemble it. They said they would replace the current smithing items with a ruined version, but there is a possibility that these will drop from monsters and that. They can't be worn or used, but only high alked or disassembled for invention. So it's possible that it will be tradable so the high alchers or the bank standards as we know them can buy them and make money that way. And at the same time, the, the rune knight items from PVM are actually above average. So you can't just remove them without nerfing all the PVM drops from 
every boss in the game. Yeah, but they're they're removing them. Like those are going. Yeah. Bye bye. Those they they are going. Yeah. Bye bye. I I yeah. do think that the that the ruined item should be untradeable. Okay, then let's give them that advice. Yeah. Um, I think it should be tradable though. Because if they are tradable and they're just not wearable, then we're in the same boat that we're in right now with the drop tables. That's what I'm afraid of, yeah. I, I okay, totally... that's a pretty good point. Uh, yeah. Because what's the point? I mean, you can have these items that are good for mining and smithing, but you can't get them while they're dropped from PVM. That's fine. But we're not fixing the core mechanic that is wrong with PVM at this point if these items are still tradable. Yeah, and you know, they said before, that you could remove these things and merely have them drop gold. It would not affect the economy that much. It really wouldn't. And that's what I'm in favor of. Yeah, and I mean, just give it to Mod Timbo. He'll determine the appropriate amount to give, and there you go. Mm -hmm. um, also, tradable tokens for extra ores or bars when skilling. Now, yeah. you know, that's, that's, that's interesting. Uh, that's interesting to me because... That is something that sounds like could be a treasure hunter update. Oh, I never thought about that. You know, I like this when it when I first heard it, but the more I've thought about it, the more I don't like it. Well, I, I think I think the tradable tokens are all right for getting, you know, more ore or more um, 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 bars. I think that's fine, definitely. And the reason I think that's fine is because you still need to go to the mining spot to mine get it right exactly and you still yeah. need to smith with it and like i said this could be a treasure hunter update and i think everyone will be thankful that it's not on treasure hunter currently yeah. they're looking well, into yeah, bringing it true. as a alternative or actually replacing the ball drops for metal dragons with these tokens because it doesn't make sense if you slay a steel dragon and don't get anything related right, to steel. Right, right. And that's fine. And I'm going to take this one step further. And in addition to these tokens, these can be dropped from PVM and whatnot and be sold. But let's give skillers another way to compete on this front. Mining and smithing potions with super and grand varieties. Let's bring those into game as well. We have agility potions. Why not mining and smithing potions now? Well, we do with the jujus, right? They don't increase your levels, though. Oh, okay. Because remember now, your smithing level, your mining level, those affect how you can yeah. mine. Well, oh, they're going to have to tweak those anyway when it yeah. comes to those potions because they won't be, um, yeah, they won't be good anymore. But so maybe they could just change that around. Um, yeah. Yeah, either way, either way, I'm on board. Yeah, definitely. Um, a second beta before the release of this rework, so that's good. And I mean, you know, this is a mechanical uh, beta uh, determining how the mechanics work and whatnot. So um, you, we'll def definitely want a beta in the future that actually shows how it's interacting in game with everything. So I think that's fine. Um, Traherne Hour will be reworked uh, with the same idea. What did they? Uh, what did they say about this, you guys? So they mentioned that they really like the idea of the community needing to hop worlds and work together to find this harmonized runite rock so they all can stand around it, 50 people in one square and mine it all day long. Uh, it really brings the community to co together, the cooperation between people. But with runite being enough to tile 50, they need to switch out the rocks in Priftinus. And they're going to have to look at it again because with non-depletable rocks, that, well, that removes the idea of harmonized crew needs. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so, so, it, so that's basically what's rework. going on about. All right. Um, ideas they had, fire making, affecting the heat mechanic. We already talked about that with coal, so uh, we won't. Yeah. Labor and that here point it's possible much. to get added before the current beta ends. Oh, now that would be interesting. That would be very interesting. Okay. Yeah, they yeah. just don't have an NPC that can change your level right now. And 
new Dungeoneering item to make smithing 100% AFK. We talked about that already. Yeah. Thumbs down. Um, and of course, if you guys missed that, just rewind a bit to hear why we said thumbs down rather than, uh, um, you know, just throwing it out the window. Um, making the Artisan's Workshop the Smithing Guild. I think that makes sense. That's long overdue. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's cool. Um, yeah. And the Spring Cleaner will auto alk or disassemble the rune drops from combat. And, yeah, and, that's an idea. And, yeah, that's an idea. And we'll have to wait and see. But that's that only if we get the ruined items. So right. If we don't do that, then they'll have to figure out something with the Spring Cleaner. Um, yeah. So much is uncertain at the moment. Spring Cleaner is a big one, definitely. So Yeah. and But, you know, with what they've done so far, I actually have a lot of confidence that these things will be worked out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I haven't gone to various places in the community to see what their reaction is, but um, as as I know, as you guys know, we like to form our own opinions here, and, and that's partially why. And speaking of opinions, the uh, polling booth is in the game at the beta uh, test square, and you can vote in a limited poll there. So what do you think of mining in the beta? 43% love it. 31% say there's pretty good but some problems. 12% no strong opinion. 7% don't really like it, and 4% can't stand it. And now you That's know only eleven percent that don't like it. Yeah, very positive. Yeah, and now I'm going to highlight that the funny part is here is to me this mining beta feels a lot like what was promised in the initial rework that was scrapped. <laughs> uh, what's that? If if uh, what Ford say? If I asked people what they wanted, they would have told me faster horses. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, you know, you with, with that being said, um, it's just a matter of presentation. And they did that a lot better this time than last time. And mm-hmm. I said that on the podcast when we got the first overview. This is great. They are just presenting this wrong. And lo and behold, here we are. Relatively the same content, just presented differently. Look at this uptake. Mm-hmm. Now, moving on over to smithing here, because smithing um, is also important. Smithing is a little bit more split. 28% love smithing in the beta. 32% say it's pretty good, but have some problems. But appreciate this here. 60% either either love it or say it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm. And what might be a little bit concerning with this, of the people who have played the beta, 16% don't really like it and 8% can't stand it. So that's 24%, almost one quarter, who have some major issue with it. Um, I don't know. Like, and, and see, that's the problem with these polls is that you can't tell what this issue is. You have to rely on you know, the, the forums and other official uh, feedback vessels for this. We, we yeah, know so what this issue is. Yeah, so yeah, the ages also. You don't have to speculate. We 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 know we know what this issue is. You it's have the, to it's be It's going to be the drops, active. right? No, well, yeah, that's for one, but those people aren't even voting right now. So I don't even count them. The people that are saying they hate it and they don't like it are the people that AFK smithing. They make they're making money from um Alkin long swords and stuff like that. Um it's because it's not 100 percent afk skill and netflix right like, and that's that why is the rub and that's why they're talking about adding that item from dungeoneering then yeah i yes. mean it is but i i think they have done a good job at sticking by their by their guns right now and i and i i think you you need to do that yeah oh definitely definitely 22 percent might not like it but um i still i i don't know I still think it's good and it, it's good and I like the feel and um, will you lose those 22% of no, people? No, you're not going to lose stop? that over the skill. No. I don't think. No. See, exactly. So keep going, man. Yeah. Keep those, going, Jagex. Those people will probably just avoid the skill, but if we look at the big picture, this will make smithing a much more desirable skill to actually train and get engaged with. Right. I know and people that have got 99 smithing as their first skill, and they are proud of it. Now, this is a skill you can be truly proud of when doing real-life smithing in RuneScape. 
Oh, for sure. And look, there is absolutely no way to make 100% of players happy. Um, we're going to lose some here and there. And I hate to like say we got to move on. I, I don't want to lose them, but that's just the reality of, of things. And you can't make all the people happy all the time. No, you, you just you can't. Just got to get as many as you can and be sure you're all in agreement. Definitely. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, we're just going to wrap this up now. And uh, we each have a couple of little things that we want to uh, bring forward in terms of our concrete feedback, things that we would absolutely like to see changed if we um, could do that. And for me, the biggest one has to be the inclusion of coal. Like we said before, it all comes down to coal. It doesn't make sense that coal be relegated to just, you know, uh, mithrils and adamant bars and steel bars. That that makes no sense at this point. Allow the furnace in tandem with your fire making level to have hotter heat or maybe not deplete as fast if you fuel it with coal. Assume that it's fueled by default with something, but if you want to add coal to it as a player – Add coal to it and make that decrease the amount of progress just a little bit slower than we have right now. So in effect, adding coal to it will make it so that it doesn't need to be as click intensive. I think that would be a good way of doing it. And it would allow for the people who have extra money and for the people who have a stock of coal to benefit when the skill goes live. So it it all comes down to coal for me on that one and that has to be the biggest thing um the biggest issue that i have a problem with with the um with the with the my sorry smithing part of the update now the other thing that i need to just say this isn't a part of a feedback that is in the beta right now but this is um probably off a bit ways towards the second beta and maybe even the end release of it is is to ensure that the high level option the non-tradable overload item is talked about and appears in game and is similar to something that people will be able to level the skill up with and use on their own to give a reason to people to level up the skill and not just purchase the decorated items and level it you know, because, I mean, I, I think we can all attest that we love the way overloads work, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, and, and that really wasn't talked about in this beta. But second beta, I want that to be fleshed out in full. And I was a little bit disappointed not seeing it here, but I can understand that we're just wanting to um, get the process in place for this. And third little nitpick is that on that same kind of vein, I would like to see before the next beta comes out or maybe even before it goes to release the options they're looking at for PVM drops that can be put onto these elder rune items to enhance them with. So those are the, those are the three things that I would say are the biggest jumping around in my mind right now. For me, the first one would be take a closer look at different mining locations around the world. We talked about, having rocks of the same ore next to each other and how it makes mining interactive. But what about different mining locations? If we look at iron, for example, you can find iron basically anywhere around the world. What makes one one stack of iron different from the other? Oh yeah, definitely. So what they want to do is to eliminate those... Uh, locations but i want the locations to be a little bit more unique for example that iron that's locked behind a dungeoneering resource dungeon or a quest area maybe has a chance of uh, getting more fragments for the golem outfit maybe it drains less stamina maybe it has that's lower good rock. It's not penetration, but that questing and dungeoneering that requires more work to reach, that it supports the skill. That's the first one. The second one is I would like to suggest with having a second ingredient interacting through 
multiple balls uh, in the high high tier of smithing. We have coal that interacts with steel and smithing. We have luminite used for adamant and and phasmite could then be a second ingredient for both tire 70 and tire 80, maybe possibly tire 90, but that's too far, to make it smoother when uh, leveling and instead of, well, I hit a new, new milestone, I need to search where all these new mining locations are. For the new player who doesn't know that, it will be more stressful than if you already know where well, you can find the secondary ingredient as you have mined before and just need to find one. And lastly, I would still take a look at the possibility of maybe not dropping all your balls and ores into the furnace. I'm a person who likes keeping an eye you mean on the my hopper? stuff. Yeah, the hopper. I'm a I'm a person who likes more having my stuff in my bank because not only does it make things more accessible if you are trading on the grand exchange and trading with your friends, it also makes that you can easily check if you can complete the mining or smithing daily or if you need to acquire a certain ore bar for a quest. So. I still think that the bank is the place where people have their stuff. I really appreciate the POH wardrobe and the angle, but I feel that with the mining, uh, having the coal bag, we have, and with smithing creating items at a much slower pace, we have eliminated much of the run that happens every XP per hour. So, take a second look. I personally think it can go away and it's something that portable forges can stand in for, that you don't need to run anyway. Right, and that's probably on that huge list of uh, things mm-hmm. that need to be looked at, the portable forges and whatnot. All right. Yeah. How, how about you, Tennis? All right. Well, um, I actually have very little um, to to add uh but I, I have a few little things just so that I don't sound like a uh, like a Jagex shill here, right? Um, because I actually think they've done a great job. I, I, I love what has been done. I love the mechanics. If I could just massage something a little bit, I might make the ore bag a little more tied to your mining level. And so um, rather than necessarily just a tier of ore, maybe that would be tied to your mining level, which then by default would be attached to the ore, you know, the tier. Um, That I think might be a a nice little, um, a nice little adjustment. And, um, and I also would like to see a little bit more with the stamina bar. Um, We have the interaction between the agility and the strength, and that is great. I love it. Um, But the only part I don't like is once you hit level 15, you're done. There it is. Um, I would like to see that progress on through the levels a little bit. Um, so in addition I, to your agility, making it last longer then? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And um, that's basically it. Oh, well, one last thing, and this is um, this isn't a criticism or anything, but thank you, Jagex. This is how you do a beta. This is how you do a beta. Finally. Um, there's nothing fancy about this some of the rocks are blocks but we have what we need to be able to determine if the mechanics are right and that is what we have been missing in every other beta thus far so i'm really happy the way this worked out and i'm really happy um with the way they presented it well said yeah you know completely agree on that and we didn't touch on that in the beginning but um the fact that you can go into this beta and it is very abstract and not an actual game world i think helps a lot ensuring that people take it for what it is so oh yeah they really made it this time yeah perfect 
All righty. We just got a couple of uh, quick little RS things before we move on to questions this week. Um, but of course, if you do have feedback on the uh, mining and smithing beta, they say you can talk on the official forums in the in-game opinion poll and on Twitter, tweet Jagex Jack, Jagex Dag, Jagex Tomb, or Jagex Shogun. And of course, all of that is in the news post and all of this good stuff is linked on the show notes at update.rsvmb.com. So also this week to celebrate celebrate the uh, Chinese New Year, we got the Zodiac Festival. This is, in a way, a revamped version of those holiday events that we have been uh, having every so often here in that you get these Zodiac talismans and whatnot. Um, the main difference at this point is that you can't convert these Zodiac talismans into bonus XP or Dungeoneering token bags or cash bags. And... There are little achievements, or rather task sets, that you can do inside of this event that will grant you more tokens, which is something that they really haven't done before. So uh, I was actually quite surprised to see this. What did you guys think of that? Yeah, I thought same. it was cool. Yeah, yeah they definitely yeah, same, needed to same do that. Thing. I mean, I was surprised that, like, uh, where's the convert button? <gasps> it's not there. Where's this right? feeling to? <laughs> right. Yeah, it's like a shock. It's like opening the door door to the toilet and finding yourself outdoors. <laughs> <laughs> I was that shocked. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. That's very funny. Okay. Yeah. Um, anyways, you know, standard overrides and whatnot, tea resting animation or food the lion pet. Um, so these are things that you'll be able to complete and you have until the 25th to do it. And, you know, for some reason it doesn't feel as focused on Treasure Hunter, which is good. So, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, they really managed to slowly because move it's focusing away from in that. on actual things you can do in game, which I think is great. So, um, which makes player engaged without without something that is as costly as quests or new bossing or or things that will only involve part of the players. Yep, that's right. Overall, I think that's pretty well done. Okie dokie. So also this week, Valentine's Day, and you can purchase the Amare outfit, um, which they say, are you ready to get your Cupid on? So they have uh, <laughs> they have examples of this uh, uh, in-game here. And of course, the men's one is more revealing than the woman's one. Um, so if that's your kind of thing, you can purchase that. I know Sirion was contemplating um, purchasing this because that is... Yeah, uh, that just is, thinking of him. That is his general motif in uh, in-game. <laughs> Yeah, sitting, yeah. running around the Priftinus agility course. Some clannies even say they have seen him naked, apparently, but that's just a rumor floating around there. <laughs> and I know Tannis isn't going to buy this. No. Just, <laughs> just no. <laughs> Can we get an explanation why? Uh, it's, it's, it's too cute for me. You know, it's... it's oh. Uh, Oh, love. All righty then. We do have some patch notes this week as well. Um, a number of them, though not as many as some weeks. It's not a bumper crop. So I'll just uh, begin here. Uh, the number of minimum requirements for ultra water settings, uh, wa water setting caustics effect has slightly been reduced. So you might be able to go on to ultra water if you haven't before. And it's worth noting that the only place you'll benefit from ultra water right now in game is Metaphos. Um, yeah, because, you know, they're the only place that has the caustic effects on water. So um, oh, okay. and that came in last summer. Um, Zilliana and Kirill no longer incorrectly state that they can unlock Sacrifice, Devotion, and Transfigure on the Beast tab. Because, of course, those come from the smaller creatures drops inside God Wars Dungeon 1. Okay, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, I thought you could get them. I, I thought you could wow. get them from Ziliana and Kirill as well. But um, I mean, you'd think you could get them from there because they are fairly big drops. But I guess not. So yeah, or you, you can just unlock them at the floating ice on Iceland uh, mini game at Tuska. Yeah, or that. But whoever goes there, right? Me, oh. Iron Man. It's, oh, it's okay, Iron, Iron Man. Man. Right. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, players can no longer obtain duplicate outfits from the Constructors, Lumberjack, Golden Mining, or Master Runecrafter sets via a player-owned house, wardrobe, or Diango. Oh, that's interesting. 
<laughs> items dismantled by a spring cleaner and now added to the root metric drop log because um, previously you would miss these drops and they would just disassemble them. And I think it's good to know that you got these at some point, even if they did get disassembled, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I actually missed times when the lock of the dwarves gives me a rune plate body and then suddenly it's gone like, where is it? And I'm searching everywhere and then, oh, of course. It's been disassembled. The right. Yeah, the spring cleaner got it. Okay. Number of urns looted to complete the Pyramid Plunder daily challenge, previously 50 to 52 in most cases, has been reduced to 30 to 42 to account for the time taken to reach the deeper rooms. <sighs> That's good. That's I know good. very few people who like Pyramid Plunder, so this is a welcome change. Mm -hmm. So, the Spinning wheel on the Sears Village door is now open by default. I can tell you lots and lots of stories about that spinning wheel. I spent lots I mean, of time there feels leveling like crafting. Six, seven years late. Yeah, yeah. Try ten years late. Yeah. Please. Try ten years late, maybe even twelve. But anyways, wow. deposit boxes now include a right-click deposit all option. Yay! Slider puzzles have been updated to be much more responsive to control, and a check oh, yes. button has been added to the slider puzzle interface to indicate which tiles are incorrectly placed. And this creates a red border around the incorrect tiles. How is that for you, Tannis? Um, I don't know. I've never done a clue. Oh, so, okay. Right. Yeah. I've always been afraid of it. Now, when the update comes out, I might actually try it. We'll see. Yeah. And, but I have no idea how that's going to play out with the with the changes here. Yeah. It is so responsive now. And, you know, there's a story here that back in the day when RS2 first came out, Jagex did a lot of stuff on the client like this and like the bank and whatnot. But because of the people who are exploiting the game, the botters and whatnot and the injection kitties and all that, um, they had to move a good amount of the processing to the server side to ensure that people wouldn't be able to unfairly manipulate the game. But of course, as the game has evolved and cheat detection has also evolved with that, um, we've started to see things returning to be more executed on the client. And that's why we're now able to get these um, treasure trails to be able to, or these treasure trail puzzle boxes down to be executed so quickly that there's very little delay. And if you're watching the video version of this podcast right now, I'm playing back a copy of me doing a puzzle box and a clue. And you would think I'm playing this at two times the speed based on how fast I'm going, but that is just how fast and responsive it is right now. Oh, I must test Good. one. And and who sees a bot in RuneScape 3 nowadays? What? Uh, yeah, right? I mean, in, yeah. they're there, but I mean, they're not that common in the members' world. Um, yeah, they're hiding somewhere. No. But, I mean, you just need to do a, a clue scroll box to appreciate how fast this is and what a breath of fresh air it is. Um, and, I mean, you click check and then you get a nice little glowing box around there and it shows you which ones are missing and on some of the clue boxes it's pretty hard um to see you know especially you know if you got a bad screen or something you might be missing a subtle detail on it so very nice that they show which ones are now out of, out of position with this that is a much appreciated update moving on from this it is now also possible to invert the keyboard controls on a puzzle box using a check interface. So what this effectively means is that it feels like now rather than moving the pieces around, you're moving the void empty square around. Personally, this doesn't affect me much because I always use my mouse on these boxes. Is there a toggle for this? Yes, there is. Yes. You know it. It's yeah, a check right on, the, right on the puzzle box. Yeah. Which is a little bit, it's a little bit disconcerting to see that there, but hey. But at least it's not hidden in the game settings. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, um, the action bar update, that was something that was <laughs> hidden. Oh, yes. Players can now open bird's nest and divine eggs quickly by repeatedly clicking on the last egg or nest in the backpack, similar to prawn balls. Yes. It's really Very good for fun. those of us who, who go to the kingdom for that, I think. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and once again, that's another item that's hard to see if there's a seed in it or not, because they're yep. all that dark color. So, yep. very nice. All tiers of aura refresh are now stackable, and generic single skill lamps now abide by the gain XP from lamp warning toggle in the gameplay settings and general gameplay settings. Also, the gain XP from lamp warning toggle state has been inverted 
so that it no longer displays the warning when unticked. So if it's ticked, that means you're going to see the warning, which is the way it should be, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, last couple patch notes here. The amount of time a player can be caught thieving in Priftiness now starts to cool down after being caught once. Time doesn't pay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, though I'm not sure what this means. The amount of times a player can be caught thieving in Prif now starts to cool down after being caught once. The thing is, that means that before you get blocked out, you're it's already starting to count your blocked out time. That's the way I took it. Oh, okay. Yeah, and also that if you leave after being caught once, then the timer won't start, and when you come back later, you get instantly caught ah, once yeah. and the first okay. time, and it instantly goes on a cool down, and that's okay. annoying. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's a nice little quality of life update, and I don't think it'll uh, Im- improve the XP by too much. So. Nah. And finally, a don't ask me again option has been added when declining a special Slayer assignment. This can be re-enabled via dialogue options with the relevant Slayer Master when asking about special assignments. Ah, yes. The patch note of 2018, right there. Boom. I find it hard to believe they are going to top that. Oh, I've been wanting that for a long time. Morvin, you can go take your challenge and shove it directly. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, um, but yeah, this is this really removes a lot of stress. I mean, every single time I'm meeting Morvin, like, no, don't even mention a special, special challenge. It's, <laughs> I'm just holding my weapon pointed at him and <laughs> saying, do not mention it. You can already imagine my red eyes after a really <laughs> tough task and looking at him. <sighs> yes. All righty. Well, that sums up the patch notes nicely. Uh, we're going to move on to the questions right now. Um, but first, just a reminder that if you want to get a little bit of a preview about what's happening uh, this week in RuneScape, just head on over to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash rsbnb, every Monday for the Weekly Bite. Thank you to Pernasius for guest hosting the Weekly Bite these past two weeks. Uh, it was nice having him. And if you just uh, go there and have a look, you'll get a brief rundown of the week's updates, the patch notes that are consequential, and a little bit of a reminder that you can find RSBNB Update also on YouTube every weekend. So if you want the weekly bite or RSBNB Update delivered, just head over to youtube.com slash RSBNB and subscribe. Recommend them to people who don't check out the RS website every Monday. That's right, definitely, and and that's why we do it because you know there are so many people who don't know what the update is. So I can just say, go check out the weekly bite at YouTube slash RSBNB. I actually found one person who didn't know the beta was live. Can you imagine? Well, there you go. Well, if they had heard the weekly bite, they would know that. Yeah. So uh, share it with your friends as well. I'm gonna tell him. All right, so moving on to questions. We got an audio question this week from the RR Man. Hey, guys. RR Man here. It's been a while. Happy uh, 2018. Hope it's all going well. Anyway, just want to talk about the beta because I'm really pumped for it. Probably one of my hyped, most hyped updates for the year. But um, to be honest, I didn't really play the beta too long, probably 15 minutes. But that's uh, that's generally more than I do for a beta. Just not really a fan of I never really seem to be able to find anything wrong, so I'm not sort of, I'm not the sort of person they need. But it was really cool the way they did it, and it's really nice that they didn't just make it the whole world. So you know we haven't got those people going and just doing boss killing and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, getting on to it, I just want to say, you know, I love it. The only criticism, and if it, I don't know if I can actually call it a criticism, is that um, they seem to be doing just fine. Seems to be turning out quite well. Looks amazing. The mechanics work. They, man, and they're even doing it at like a amazing pace. So if you don't see what I'm getting at, it's just my criticism is that that poll last year where they talked about it would be so difficult and it'd be very hard to do this option. It will take longer. Uh, to be quite honest, they they're moving along at such a such a speed. I I just think that as we said a lot of the times, 
they just didn't seem to want to do it at all. So, <laughs> but now they're doing it and it's perfect. So, oh well. Anyway, let's put a quick question in here. Uh, <laughs> I'm sticking to the sort of being in the past and that's sort of the theme of the question. But um, yeah, my only sad point is that I'm all 99 in uh, smithing and mining. So I'm wondering if oh, they probably won't be able to do it. But if they could do it, would you guys actually reset your characters level 1 and level 1 smithing and mining? Just to go through it again? Because, you know, to be honest, it's going to be, the leveling will be a bit faster, so it won't take you as long as it did in the past. But um, if they don't, uh, would you think about doing, like, an Iron Man to do it? Because, to be honest, that's why I made my Iron Man, so that I could go through the mining and smithing. And, wow, it's, man, it's cool. Can't get over it. Can't wait to hear what you guys think. Uh, peace out. I would do it after I get 99 mining and smithing the first time. Just like I would re reset for um, uh, farming, like I've highlighted in the past before. Hmm, I would... I'm of the person who likes the smaller rewards at a, at a fast rate that the current mining and smithing is doing. So I wouldn't reset, but I got that questing account that's not maxed in mining and smithing that I could do it to. So I would sample it, but I wouldn't reset to one. All right. Tannis? No. Whoa! You will my max cape out of my cold, dead hands. No. I might start an Iron Man because it actually does sound fun, and it might be kind of cool to be like to role play a blacksmith. Like that could be kind of cool or something. I don't know. Even if it was just not an Iron Man, but another account, but I would never ever reset any of my skills ever. Work way too hard for him. Wow. Okay. Interesting that I'm the only one who would do that then, because uh, I mean it. It's a little bit odd in that regard. <laughs> so. You'll you'll know the feeling when you put when you put that cape on Shane. Ah, uh, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about. I know that. you're gonna max Shane. It's so warm and fuzzy and cuddly. I don't know. You, you will never let it go. Yeah, you don't want. You don't ever want to let it go. You know, it's it it's it's like it it's like um, it's like that one line from Star Trek where where. Admiral Kirk regrets being promoted to, to Admiral and wanted to be captain again and tells Picard to never let anyone, you know, take him out of that chair. Right. That's what I feel like when it comes to <laughs> regards to maxing. Like, I mean, it's going to happen by attrition at some point, but that's, that's the general sentiment I have. Well, I'm waiting yeah. here for you, Shane, with open arms. But it's a whole new world once you, I mean, just think all the fun stuff you get to do. You get to, you get to dress up, you know, and fashionscape. Yeah, all fashionscape day all day long. Mm -hmm. Waking up in the morning, looking at yourself like, what color am I going to wear today? <laughs> and then the one twenty grind begins. You know, <laughs> I'm already doing one twenty grinds, but anyways, okay. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Thank you, the RR man. That was a good question. And um, I appreciate your feedback on that as well. It certainly feels like we've come a long way. So uh, yeah, you got uh, two no's and one yes. Um, next one is from Parnassius. Good day, guys. Pern, Pern here with a question about an issue from the patch notes a couple of weeks ago in regards to the exploit used at Next Angel of Death and Telos involving box traps to circumvent some of the boss mechanics. Everyone had a good chuckle over this, and while I'm using it is cheating to use an exploit or bug in the game to gain an unfair advantage. Yes, I agree with that, and I think I said that on the show. Jagex did nothing to punish the players using this cheat mechanic. However, my question to you is, personally, I think if they did want to punish the players for this, there would just be far too many of them um, to ban for this, which, I mean, it's unfortunate that that's, that's the state of the community, but it is what it is. So my question to you is this. If a skiller had found a similar exploit and abused it, do you think Jagex would be as lenient? Say, for example, a player worked out that dropping a box trap on an enriched wisp when it appeared during invention, I think he means divination, keeps the wisp active for twice as long as the box trap was active, and they were able to get continuous enriched memories, then... 
or if a miner dropped on a rune walk, rock, which meant it didn't deplete, wooden jagex give them at least a temporary ban? We see this a bit with the high-level PVM community getting away with dodgy stuff all the time. I would point out you got it, or you got lit last year, who was found to have been treading trading gold with real world trading and was banned yet appealed it and had it reversed simply because he was a high level elite pvm player i would very much doubt that this would have been the case for a regular skiller love to hear your thoughts on this as always happy scaping to you all i'm gonna say that you know i have zero evidence me personally that jagex is lenient towards different groups of players one way or the other. I do think that sometimes there are interesting things that go on at Jagex with players who are high level players who are famous or people who might've met J mods. I think there are some interesting things that go on with that. Um, though I don't have any evidence that this is widespread, nor do I have any evidence that this is something that is a systemic problem. Now on to the question here. Should Jagex have banned the people who have done that? You know, that that is really a gray area. And I think it comes down to uh, what was gained from this. You know, you make a good point that if it were skilling or whatnot, if a huge bug was found with skilling, then yeah, people would definitely get banned for it, I think. Um, I think the biggest skilling thing that we can report that last happened like this was the... Um, inaccurate and wrong xp curve and the wrong xp values for invention and they did a rollback for that didn't they no okay well what no, was the I thing they remember did them doing it. what was the thing the they thing did a rollback was... for then they did a rollback something invention related i think i don't know but they did not roll back the um okay what they did about... well then that's in regard then to what they did with um the next angel of death and telos uh issue yeah and there i mean there was another i mean there's another example i can think of that's more recent um where skillers didn't get banned but i understand what he's saying like i do think there is a bit of a double standard when it comes to that and i do see i perceive whether it's true i perceive yes there that's being the key a word partiality there. perceive partiality towards players and types of players and whatnot yes um but there's no evidence I, that we have of it correct um yeah correct i mean you know and i and i don't even and i think it even it's it's more than just that i also i also see partiality to i perceive partiality to even like uk players sometimes but that's just because of probably proximity and it's it's and i'm looking at that as people that they feature after the streams and and and, and stuff like that but um not very long ago if you remember when crystal chinchampas came out if you used an aggro pot you could aggro them and they followed you around like yeah. little puppies <laughs> and you could get crazy XP amounts like that. Like it was, it was cool. And as far as I know, they didn't ban people for that, um, which was clearly not the way it was supposed to be. Not working as down. intended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's going to be called a bug. That's an unintended side effect, in my opinion. Oh, well, okay. I mean, people, people need to have the freedom to find the best way of training i mean if i don't like the if jagex has to come in and say this is the best way to train it giving playing the freedom to find the way the most efficient way is, is something i really love about the game i mean they are, when it comes to bossing they will they're high taking it so high that the j mods can't beat it and then they let the players beat it that's an example with Angel of Death. And that's our freedom I really sh think should be encouraged. So when should a player get banned? Well, in my opinion, it's down to when something is so obviously a bug that you can't ignore it. For example, I once came across a bug where you could do magic without the usage of runes. Is that a bug? Oh yes, it it breaks. The, yeah, it breaks a lot. And should I be using it? No. And 
maybe there is somebody out there who knows about that bug if it's not patched yet. And but that's a bug and it comes to logic behind it, but it's a huge gray area between what is something that's acceptable, something that improves your XP per hour, and something that is not meant to be there, and the outcome of it is affecting the the rest of the community in a negative way. All right. I have my own take on this, and I'm going to give it to you in just a moment. But first, there is a rule on runescape.com slash game guide slash rules, knowingly exploiting a bug. Players must not attempt to use any cheats or errors which they find in our software. Any exploits a player finds must be reported immediately to Jagex through customer support. Why we have this rule, we put a lot of effort into balancing our games to make them as fair and as fun as possible. Bugs can spoil the effect of a game, so we obviously want to fix them as quickly as possible. Deliberately taking advantage of a bug can unbalance the game and devalue other players' efforts. Okay, so that is the, that is the rule right here. Now, if you find a bug and then report us to us immediately and do not divulge the nature of the issue to any other players, players won't be penalized for experiencing a, a bug unless they use it to their own advantage or advertise the nature of the issue to other players. So that is Djagix's definition of when you can be penalized for exploiting a bug. Then there's just some general wording about, you know, there are no cheat codes available. All gains have to be made through fair and honest gameplay. Any uses of cheats or bugs or attempting to discover the existence of cheats or bugs is a direct violation of our rules. So my interpretation of this is that if you find a bug and report it, you're fine. If you find a bug and you get an extra item, you're fine as long as you report it. But if you do this and you do not report it to Jagex and you tell your friends about it and get them to use it, then yeah, you're knowingly exploiting a bug. So the question is, for how long did this issue at Nex and Telos exist before it was reported? And how long did it take for them to report to put that into game? And a better question to ask, which we don't have the answer to right now, was anyone banned for using this bug or disseminating its information? Because if you can imagine someone might have posted a thread on the official forums disseminating this bug, I could imagine there'd be consequences for that person. Oh, yes. But the question I have is, was this knowingly exploited and used by the PVM community? I have been doing a lot of Angel of Death with pro PVM teams, and this never came up. Hmm. I could ask somebody who got who has 4K Angel of Death kills, but if that person didn't knew about it, then there was probably this one player who keep who kept uh, using mithril flowers in search of breaking or box traps. Breaking. Yeah, or box yeah. traps. Of um, breaking. I would appreciate you asking that person, and you know, keep it completely anonymous and whatnot. Tell them you were on the show. Tell them what the question was about, but ask them. Um, now, in regards to the actual question, yeah, definitely. If people find this as a bug, they should definitely report it and if they exploit it and Jagex finds out about it yeah they should be banned based on this rule here that's why I want to clarify this rule Um, and you know the example of real world trading that's also something else that happens but hey it would be nice if we could audit what customer support was doing but that's data that's not provided to us I would love for us to have data on that but I don't think it's possible so Basically, what I'm saying is that I think it should be enforced, except I don't have the information to know if Jagex was letting people off with this. And that's why I'm not going to come down hard on them either way for this. 
But in the case of You uh, Got Lit, that definitely should have been a permanent ban. Yeah, they are not making their bands flashy. Yeah. All right. Um, anything else on this one? Not from me. All righty. I'm happy. Thank you, Pern. Uh, if you guys want to send in your own questions, you can email them to questions at rsbnb.com. We also take voice messages or text messages at 571-57BNB. And you can leave us a DM or an at mention on Twitter at RSBNB as well. All right. So moving into tech news this week, we got a number of stories here. Um, either you guys Snapchat users? No. Nah. No, okay. Well, Snapchat put out an update that was billed as a major redesign, and many people dislike this update. So much so that a petition was put out calling on Snapchat to roll back this design, and it has now hit over 1 million people who have signed it. Previously, it was at 600,000. Well, that'll do. <laughs> roll it back, guys. You know, you think Jagex is bad with rollbacks and doing what the community says, but here we have Snapchat getting a survey with one million signatures saying, <laughs> we don't like this design, roll it back. Um, oh. Snapchat issued a statement that says um, that their updates can, quote, take a little time to get – can take a little time getting used to, and we hope the community will enjoy it once they settle in. So uh, you're in for the ride, users of Snapchat. The UI has oh changed, God. and that's the way it's going to be. They got some cojones, eh? Damn. Yeah. And I, and I mean, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens here because, as we've talked about numerous times before on the podcast, Snapchat is, at its core, going to become an advertising platform with their stories feature that they can pipe through into people's video streams when they're talking with their friends and whatnot. So that's what Snapchat has to do because last we talked, Snapchat really wasn't all that profitable. So, um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see and see if this is a inflection point for Snapchat, which drives people away from the platform. But as we talked about last week with social, I don't think it will because, you know, people are just too intertwined with that Snapchat thing. Until the next one comes. Yeah, yep. who knows? The question I have is how large portion is one million out of the entire user base? Oh, it's pretty small. It's pretty small, I think. Okay. Well. Yeah. Let me just see if I can give you some exact it's... numbers on, uh, let's see, Snapchat user base. Um, oh, Snapchat revenue for the year of 2017. Business Statistics, um, let's see. User statistics. Um, 83% of them are between 12 and um, 17 years old with a daily user base of 173 million worldwide, 68 million of which are in the United States. So pretty small. Yeah, so 1 million is basically a top drop in, in the, the bucket. Sea. Yeah. So, um, but nonetheless, um, we're going to be monitoring this and see if uh, it does anything to Snapchat's uh, share price, and see if uh, they do uh, inevitably relent on this. Because remember, they are a company that has not made a profit yet, and uh, their IPO is just quite frankly astounding as to why it's where it's at. So, to be continued. That's right. That's what we say when it comes to most of these news stories. So. Um, yeah. Are you guys Google Chrome users? Oh, yes. Okay. So this week on uh, February 15th, Thursday, Google Chrome will be releasing a new version of the Chrome browser, Chrome 65. It'll, you know, trigger trickle out through the usual update chains. But this version of Chrome, Chrome 65, has something new in it that's going to help uh, people with their advertisements that they see. And this is through Google's ad filtering uh, software that they're bringing into Chrome. So it's not an outright ad blocker, as I've said Google should do before, where remember my idea for the Google ad blocker is that, you know, there's an ad blocker in in Chrome and, you know, you have to pay a certain amount of money per month to Google. That way then, you know, you can pay to block these ads and everyone's happy. Google's happy. The user's happy. And the person who is blocking ads is happy. But that's not what, what's happening here. Um, Chrome 65 implements the better ad standards. And what this is, is it's a 
public consumer research study that analyzed over 40,000 internet users in North America and Europe that determined what kind of ad experiences were not going to be positive to their browsing experience, and it helped identify very intrusive ads. So basically, this is now a standard that's going to be running in Google Chrome, and Google is going to be evaluating websites based on this better ad standards that are through you know the Google Search uh, Console. And when it looks at these websites, it's going to see what exactly is a bad ad. And basically, w websites are going to have three statuses that are potential. They can either have a status of passing, warning, or failing, and each of these will determine what Google Chrome does in regards to its ad report. So this is a way of helping users who use Google Chrome, who are, you know, regular run-of-the-mill users, and they won't um, ultimately... Uh, have to install any third-party ad blocker for this. And any website that fails the better ad standards test will have their ads blocked. And as a result of this, Google feels that people will have a better um, experience. And you'll still have the option to allow ads on the websites for this. But this is something Chrome is doing to ensure that the web browsing standards are good and they don't interfere with people. And examples of this are are annoying ads that, you know, make your web browser maximize to full screen or maybe start playing a video with loud sound on it as part of the ad that don't give the user an option to mute the sound. Those are the kind of bad ads that this will initially be targeting. So the idea behind this, I think, is that Google can condition its users to be more accepting of ads and not necessarily need to resort to an ad blocker like Adblock Plus, for example. So Google is doing this for the health of the internet. And I mean, we've all been on sites before where you have these big ads appear and they maximize your screen. And it, it is super, super annoying. Uh, yeah. So this yeah, is going to be built into when... Chrome by default now. Yeah. Oh, That's good. Th th those moments when you can't turn the sound off. Oh, nightmare. Yeah, totally yeah. agree. Totally agree. And I mean, someone had to take a step on this and Google is the logical one too, I think, because they serve the majority of the ads in the world. So let's, let's see where this goes and maybe we could reach some sort of point eventually where ad blockers aren't as prevalent because, you know, back when we started our website – Ad blockers were a relatively new thing, and it was hard to see a user with an ad blocker. But now, ad blockers make a significant dent in the revenue that websites receive. Which, you know, you guys might like ad blockers, but I feel that as someone who creates and maintains multiple websites, ads are an important revenue stream, and we keep our ads sane here. So that's why we ask. And whenever someone starts talking about ad blockers, I say, would you please whitelist rsbnb.com and informer.rsbnb.com and update.rsbnb.com because our ads are clean and don't overarch. And that's the mentality I want to get users into is that rather than blocking all ads, just block ads that are annoying. And that's what I do because – I want users to – or I want websites to be able to earn money off of their viewers. It doesn't make sense for us to be taking these draconian steps. So very glad that Google is going down this path. Yeah, because for me, it's logical thinking that you you would rather block everything than when you're coming to a website and there is a, this annoying ad that you need to block that and then block the next one and the next one and it creates a never-ending yeah. loop. And, and that's, why, and that's yeah. why I just blacklist websites. I start with everything whitelisted and then move from there. So, Yeah, so Google putting down their foot here and says, okay, I know that ads are meant to be seen. And it helps companies to make money. It helps websites to make money. It's with good intentions. But we can't bring ads to the level where it annoys the user and counters the reason why they are visiting the website. They are not here for the ads. They're there for your content. To, yeah. yeah. They're, 
they are there for the content and ads are meant to be supportive, not to cover the entire screen. Yeah. So this this will be good, and anyone who has Chrome will be getting this update in the next couple of days. Um, anything else on this one, either? Of you? No. All righty. I really hope this this makes Google lead the others of making oh, yeah. ads that people actually can enjoy to see. Like, look on the side. Oh, there's an ad there, and it doesn't annoy me. <gasps> yep. Wow. All right. So we are here again in 2018. With another character bug causing crashes on iOS, the Mac, iPads, and Apple Watches. So, this is called the uh, Telugu character bug, and it cr- causes all these devices to crash. So much so that if you get this character sent to you and is rendered on any Apple uh, iOS device, so, you know your iPhone or your Apple Watch or your TV, your Apple TV, well, it's going to crash and not be usable until you remove the character by deleting that conversation. So anyone who wants to crash me can send me an iMessage and you will crash my iPhone and you will crash my watch with this single character until the update arrives. Um, You know, this keeps happening and it would be nice if Apple could put something in its text rendering package that would make it not happen. But I believe this is the third one that we've seen in the last year. So that's kind of concerning to me. <laughs> yeah. give, me a, give me a second. Yeah. What's your phone number again? No, 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 no. No, Tycho. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm an Android user. Well, I mean, you can um, still but... text message it to me and it would happen. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, just knowing that it won't affect me. Uh, and Tannis, you don't play any games on me either. Oh, of course not. <laughs> and I won't play any games on you. But um, yeah, every that iOS like device a... and every watch um, causes it to crash until the conversation's deleted. So this is a Tengu character. Yep. What is that? Is that like a? Um, it's an it's an Indian language, an East Indian language. Okay, so the okay. first problem with that is if I changed my language to Indian, I would never know how to change it back. Um, so would the joke would actually be on me. <laughs> so. <laughs> or someone could just copy and paste the character to you and send it. Oh, okay. Well, see, Shane, now you're telling people how to do it. Yeah, and and thankfully, uh, <laughs> thankfully, Mac rumors in this report did not include uh, the actual character. Well, that's good. Wow, mm. that's that's just crazy. Um, and I just got an update come through the other, like today or last night or something. And I didn't, I haven't done it yet. So now I will. So yeah, all, and this is what I say to everyone: always <laughs> install your updates because there's you know security fixes and whatnot and bug fixes yeah. for these kind of things in there. So you yeah, know, I, there's all of these small things that will get. That they will never pick up when bug testing. You know I mean, what? Who would have thought? You know what I should do? I know someone what? who doesn't update their iOS devices. <laughs> oh, and I no. should I should send this to him as a as a torture to make him update. <laughs> Shane, give me your number. <laughs> Not happening. That's, that's rough. That is rough. But yeah, always update your iOS devices and software updates in general because Apple, Microsoft, Google, they know what they're doing and they're going to send you these updates because they think you should have them. So um, there's lots of security fixes in here. Yeah, Needs security and performance, the two yeah. things you want to have. All righty. Well, as I said, uh, as I said last week, uh, we're going to kind of skip out on Skill of the Month update because nothing has changed since then. So we're just going to... Uh, skip over that uh, this week so we're just going to move right on into achievements right now and then wrap up the show so we got a good number of achievements this week so uh, what do we got Tannis starting on the 14th Valentine's Day what were people doing for that day in game well it sounds it looks like uh, Desmos was getting 99 Hunter on the 14th and uh, Brappa was getting 120 Defense on the 14th and then a cult got 
120 fire making, 99 agility, 120 hunter, 99 crafting, 99 thieving, 99 wood cutting, 99 fire making, 99 hunter, 99 slayer, 99 divination. All and on one day. All on one day, and so that is like a crazy achievement. Um, I hope that doesn't mean they were really lonely on <laughs> Valentine's Day. But yeah, no, it's I awesome. Like the I really like the part where he got 99 Hunter and 120 Hunter on the same day. Yeah, I don't. That's hmm, that might I, be a bug in the reporting. Yeah, like I don't even know how you, how that would happen. That might be a like, bug in wow. the reporting if the character disappeared. Um, okay. Because ninety nine fire making and ninety nine hunter are all there too, so that might be a way in the bug that the script was reporting in it was actually just ninety or sorry one twenty those days. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, but um, that's something for me to investigate. I think that's happened once or twice before. Yeah, yeah well, didn't you say something fixing it during Christmas? Uh, uh, perhaps. Perhaps I did. <laughs> I have a memory, Shane. Yeah, that's right. <sighs> All right, so uh, continuing on from that, uh, we had Brappa with 120 Slayer on February 12th, Rolla Dude with five, f- Rolla Dude 540 with 99 Fire Making on the 12th, still on the 12th, Jungle Biscuit with 120 Dungeoneering, VSS with 99 cooking on February 11th, Schnetz with 99 constitution on the 11th, Wiley with 99 slayer on the 11th, CQ Sethron or just Sethron from Clan Quest with 99 wood cutting on the 11th, and Cat Mac with 99 farming on the 11th. Very nice. And then on the 10th of February 2018, we got Wolfetopia. No. Wolfeltopia with 99 fletching, Depak with 99 fire making, Faxi with 120 dungeoneering. Congratulations to you all. Then we have I Defend with 99 Slayer on the February 9th. Oh, he's on, on the real grind now. And Halal Bacon with 99 strength, showing those muscles on the February. Hello. Yeah, that name always gets me. <laughs> yeah. That's Jungle Biscuit this time. Like, what? <laughs> Names crack me up. All right. Nice achievements, everyone. Nicely done. And this is just, you know, the opening salvo uh, heading towards Double XP Weekend. Mm-hmm. All right. Pick of the week time. What do you got for us, Tycho? So, for those who remember my pick of the week a long, long time ago. I talked about geocaching. That's a outdoor activity where you find treasures to the left, left and right and then can keep track of how many you have found with an application. Now, I'm going to take this a step further and talk about an application called Where You Go. Now, you might ask yourself, okay, what does this have to do with geocaching? Well, where you go is a certain type of geocache that is a virtual adventure where you can go go and solve puzzles where you walk around as any other person and at the end of the road you will find this physical container where you write your name and date and then go away satisfied. Now, the interesting part is that it's all community-based. So the community will make their own virtual adventures. And I myself have made four that's been varying a bit. One of them is a murder case where you interview the suspects where you inspect the dead body, where you go around the park looking for clues. It can also be that you solve small riddles, like you have 10 different weights and have to figure out which is the heavy one with the least amount of uh, worm 
how do you call it, that you have to weight them on a scale. And, and other things, and the classic, the hen, the bag of seeds, and the wolf that has to cross over the bridge. And, and that is the interesting part, that you can make it yourself at home on the computer, or you can install this app, go out and play somebody's adventures. There are also adventures that you can play anywhere, and there are also specific adventures that can only be placed at a certain place and bring more life into the story. So that's my pick of the week. Very, very neat. You know, um, this is based on where I go geo geocaching, as you said. Um, and, you know, you can, I guess you can search for cartridges and whatnot, uh, no matter where you might end up. And, you know, it's it's really interesting that this is the case. I'm sure there is some kind of iOS client for this, but this one is a pure Android client. And I think what makes this one uh, interesting and different, Tycho, is that you can uh, create your own adventures and share them with people, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, that's the case. Uh, I think it's a shame that it's, that since it's all community-based, not everyone everyone are like there's nobody who's developing them which we and that requires somebody to feel that oh, well i've never really done programming but maybe i can go into it and and it's actually really easy to make right uh it has an uh yeah and it, and it looks like you're gonna you. get a you're gonna get, get a better experience if you do it on mobile than if you didn't um uh, with their website, and you download the builder and whatnot. So, mm. yeah, yeah. So it's community based, as said, but I I really like it because it gives so much freedom in when people go out and search the thing. I mean, you can make it a pirate adventure, you can make it a murder case, you can make it well, basically anything. Only the creativity sets the limit. Very nice. All right. Uh, full link to that, uh, where you go geocaching, will be available on the show notes at update.rsbnb.com. So what have you been up to this week, Tannis? Uh, mining, smithing, yeah. divination. Yeah, I know, uh, I know what yeah. you mean. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of time in the beta I spent, too. Um, so you did the same? Lots of beta time? Yeah, I've um I've went from 1 to level 50 so far on the mining side and I think I'm level gosh, somewhere in the 20s I think on the smithing side. Um and I've been trying to stream as much as possible, but um that's where we're at and uh I've enjoyed I've enjoyed all of it. Very nice. And let me ask, did you get to level 50 without uh using the lamp? Oh yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I haven't used the lamp. Now what I have done is I will use the lamp to keep my um, agility and strength 15 levels above where I'm at because I feel like that's what I would do naturally is my agility and strength would always be higher than my mining and smithing. So yeah, that's a good, that's, that's the only thing that's been that's a good mark. To adjust. It's a good mark. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I started everything at level one when I did it, but anyways, that's beside the point. Um, how about you, Taika? What have you been up to this week on RS? Mining and smithing, of course. <laughs> that seems so. to be the general uh, <laughs> option here. <laughs> yeah, so I came into the beta level one, and then I wanted to set a natural goal that made me enjoy the content from level one to level 99. And the goal, goal I came up with was, okay, the number one thing I want to have in mining and smithing is my pickaxe. So I'm going to start at level one, make prawns, make my pickaxe, and then go over to iron, make a new pickaxe, upgrade it as much as I can, and go to the next tire. And so I continued and enjoyed the bronze and iron, steel, and so on. Uh, all the way up to Elder Rune, where, the, as we mentioned, 64 bars. Yeah, that is making. astounding. Yeah, that last grind took 
a while. That took a very good while. So no, I didn't level mining and smithing with the, the natural way, so to say, but I tested it, how agility and strength affected it. And I also got the luck of mod tomb with being logged in as I went there for the first time and heard him talk with the players about the questions, what about the spring cleaner, what are, how are you going to address this, and then him answering that, no, my gold crown isn't filled with chocolate. <laughs> it was. <laughs> so, so it actually took longer than I anticipated, but I learned so much, and that is something I'm happy to have experienced and discovered. And I felt really felt like a fish in the water here. Look, as an adventurer, I am looking, what is the best way to do it? How can I interact with the skill? And as somebody who wants to stay active, this mechanic that they presented to us really felt fitting. For, it has a place for RuneScape. Yeah, totally agree. All right. Well, I'm going to break with the mold here and say, you know, state the obvious. Oh, God, that was bad. Ow, I just kicked something. Okay. That, uh -oh. that, 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 that's on the show. That's going to be there. Um, but anyways, um, <laughs> I'm going to break with the mold and state something obvious here. You know, I, I did, of course, the mining and smithing update. But before that came out, I got 95 invention. I finished nice. the fishing rod with that. Then fancy, fancy. I also got 96 invention because Ooh. I found out that I had a bunch of things to invent at level 95 or rather discover at level 95, right? So that put cool. me into mm -hmm. range of being around 650,000 XP away. So I just had um, a crossbow and an offhanded crossbow that were ready to be disassembled and got 96 invention finally. Ooh, you're only five levels away from the big suck. Yeah, and that's right. That's one thing that's there, and that'll be for another day. That's it. I have another plan to do it that way. But the reason I was doing this is because at level 96, you unlock the Herb Protector, which came with Invention oh. Batch 2, oh. which I've been going for ever since that came out. So, oh, nice. Of course, of course. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, it's a, it's, there's one little disappointment with this is that if you activate your green fingers aura, you can't use the herb protector. Huh? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Because the, by definition, the herb patch is already being uh, protected. So it won't let you use a herb protector if you have the aura active. So you'd you have to the make... aura active for the yield though, right? I mean. Yeah, you would. But huh. if you're planting at the same time, it kind of doesn't make sense. So, um, you know, this is kind of seems kind of like a bug, and I submitted a bug report, and we'll have to wait and see what happens with this. So, you know, you have to keep us posted on that. Yeah, it's a little weird because it would be nice to be able to use both, just because you know the herb protector works for the entire cycle, whereas the aura only works for twenty minutes. And I use the aura, as you said, for yield increase. So. Mm, and double XP weekend is getting closer. Yeah, that's right. So that's why herb farming is great. Anyways, but aside from that, uh, not too much else uh, this week for me on RS. Um, we'll just wrap this show up now and say thank you, Tycho, for being here uh, with us. It was great having you on to discuss this uh, mining and smithing beta. I can only imagine what the full show will look like when it uh, comes out. Thank you, Tycho. Thanks, yeah, Taco. Thank you, oh, yeah, thanks a lot. Oh, it's good to be back and getting those fan mails. And of course, we'll be back next week for what will probably be the bank tester or the bank taster update and any other patch notes that arrive with it. But in the meantime, if you want to chat with us in game, we're at Friends Chat Bits Bites. And if you want to see what we're up to in the middle of the week, just follow on Twitter at RSBNB. And with that being said, we'll see you next week for another episode of RSBNB Update. Take care, everyone. See ya. Adios.